Good evening, members. We'll make a start to tonight's full council meeting. It's the 1st of March. I'm here in the town hall and I'm joined by councillors uh, Collier Tomas McGear, Collier Siobhan Nakuri, Collier Robert Irvine, Collier Victor Warrington, and Collier uh, Keith Elliott. We're also joined by members on WebEx. And I'd like to welcome you all to tonight's meeting. At the outset of the meeting, I would just like to comment on the passing of the late Ruben McKelvey, a former councillor at, at Oma District Council. Ruben was, by all accounts, a great character, a warm and engaging man, and a wonderful husband and father to his late wife, Eileen, and daughter, Evelyn. Reuben served the people of the Oma district for eight years as an elected representative. And while normally, nominally as the Ulster Union's councillor, he enjoyed the respect and affection of people from right across the community and the political spectrum, and was renowned for his commitment to all his constituents. He was first elected to serve the people of the Oma town district electoral area in the local government election, protecting and promoting the interests of the people of the district. I didn't know Ruben personally, but councillors Dehan, Rainey, Wilson, McElduff and Clark all served with him in the chamber of the legacy Oma District Council, and I am sure that they will all have their own fond memories of working with Ruben in the chamber. Ruben was, as I understand, renowned for his work in the community and as a lifelong trade unionist through his job in the Throne of Fermanagh Hospital. He was also heavily involved in the Throne Protestant Orphan Society and gave most, much of his time and energy to the charity. He will be greatly missed by all those who had the great privilege of knowing him, but most of all by his loving daughter, Evelyn, son-in-law, Edwin, grandchildren, Lauren and Aaron, and great-granddaughter, Isla. On behalf of the members and staff of Fermanagh District Council, and on my own behalf, I offer my sincere sympathy to Evelyn and the wider family circle on their sad loss. In accordance with the Council's protocol, I would now invite you to join me to stand for a minute's silence as a mark of respect for the late Councillor McKelvey. And uh, I am content at this stage to open up the floor to any members who may, may wish to make um, some uh, comments on bereavement of uh, Reuben. Jeremy? Jeremy? Okay. Uh, Councillor Alan Rainey. Thank you, Chair. And thank you indeed for. Uh, that tribute that you paid to my friend and colleague, the late Reuben McKelvey, I do and did really appreciate that. It is with great sadness that I pay tribute to my late friend and colleague, Reuben McKelvey. Rosemary Barton, MLA, got it spot on when she referred to Reuben as being an affable full of life character, one of nature's gentlemen, and I can truly testify to that. I have known Reuben for the past 50 plus years, long before becoming a councillor 
and someone I was proud to call a friend. I knew Reuben's health was failing over the past few months and was privileged to pay him a visit very recently, accompanied by the person who was his best man and workmate for over 37 years in the throne and for Manor Hospital. And boy, did he make us welcome even in his decline in health. The crack was mighty. Reminiscing about his work and caring for the patients in the Tyrone and Fermanagh Hospital. No winter months, Hunter says, divulged, but making hay in a warm summer day on the hospital farm was a speciality. A state of the art procedure. Men turning hay with pitchforks, carrying in hay, men building rocks and, and men, men raking and tidying up behind real therapy, a doctor's prescription for everyone. And I'm sure Dr. Deacon can testify to that. Bringing our visit to a conclusion and before saying our goodbyes, he called on Evelyn, his daughter, to bring in three glasses and a refreshment to drink to all the happy memories that we had had together over what he called a privilege of knowing each other and the happiness that it had be, been brought about a true specimen of humanity. The success of Oma District Council was something that Reuben was proud of. He spoke in glowing terms of all the councillors he was privileged to serve with, the chief executive officers, officers and staff, their ability to explore the money proposals of the meeting and bring recommendations that would all feel well, that would all feel proud to be associated with, especially the aftermath of the bomb that shook Oma, the council itself, to its very foundations. Reuben was a devout stalwart and member of the Ulster Unionist Party and a resolute councillor for the people of Oma Town and a great supporter of the West Tyrone Constituency Association. He will be sadly missed at all levels of unionism because he had the people of Oma and further afield at heart. We are the poor of his passing. You could always depend on him. What he said is what you got. I, together with so many others, were privileged to have that caliber of humanity in my armory. Reuben was immensely proud that he had become a great granddad, and on behalf of the association, I would like to pass on my condolences to his daughter Evelyn, her husband Edwin, and the wider family circle, trusting God will give them strength to look towards the dawn of a glorious eternity. And thank you, Chairman, for allowing me that uh, opportunity. Thank you, Councillor Rainey. Next, I have uh, Councillor Josephine Deehan. Thank you, Chair. And at the outset, I would like to thank you uh, for leading the tributes to the late Councillor Reuben McKelvey. As you mentioned, uh, I was one of uh, the current uh, councillor group who uh, had the privilege of serving uh, with Reuben on the legacy Oma District Council. And I have to say uh, that I found him to be a man of immense warmth, of immense compassion, with a very kindly approach demonstrating his concern for all, uh, regardless of their uh, uh, religious denomination or their political beliefs. Um, I really felt privileged to serve with him. Uh, I was a, a, a young new councillor at that time, and I was certainly inspired by his example. Um, 
he uh, his career in the Tyrone and Fermanagh Hospital uh, was exemplary, again demonstrating his care uh, for his fellow man. Uh, it is an institution uh, that is legendary in these parts, and I too was privileged uh, to have uh, spent uh, many years uh, serving the patients of the Tyrone and Fermanagh Hospital, and Reuben was exemplary in his care. So I think, as Councillor Rainey has said, we are uh, all the poorer for his loss, but we can admire him and his life's work, his dedication to his family, to his community, uh, to those in need, and he was never stinting in his willingness to spend his time for the benefit of other people. So I too would like to uh, extend my sincere condolences to his daughter Evelyn, uh, his son-in-law Edwin, uh, his, his grandchildren and great-grandchild, uh, and also to his um, uh, colleagues in the Austro Unionist Party, and uh, I know that they will miss him very much. So thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Dehan. And next I have Collier Barra McGillidiv. Okay, thank you, Chair Coramagri. Again, on behalf of the Sinn Fein group, uh, as requested by our group leader, Councillor Tommy McGuire, I too would like to extend our sympathy and covrone on Cree to Ruben's family. Um, he was a very decent man, uh, humble in many ways, and Alan Rennie would say knew him best of all within the, this councillor group. But I remember him as a man with a great laugh. When he laughed, he, he laughed well. And uh, proud of his trade unionist background and his work in the Tyrone Fermanagh Hospital, that's how I remember Reuben. He was a good man on <coughs> issues. He always uh, stood strong on uh, services in the Oma area. In a way, you know, he's a true son of Oma and Eden Derry in particular. And he showed great humanity and compassion. That was a word that Councillor Dehan used, compassion, agreed with that. And often I saw him uh, in the town centre shopping with his, his late wife. So just want to wish to be associated with the expressions of sympathy on behalf of our group. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Goramagat. And uh, next is Councillor Mark Buchanan. Thank you, Chair. And uh, I too would like to be associated with uh, the comments of condolences to Reuben, Reuben's family at this time. Um, while I would have not have known him personally or, or worked with him at council level, um, I know he, he was a great man in the local community and I've heard lots uh, lots about him even over these past few days from his passing. So on behalf of our group and, um, and myself, I'd like to pass on our condolences. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And I have Councillor Mary Garrity next. Thank you very much, Chair. And like previous speakers, uh, on behalf of the SDLP, I want to outline our sympathies as well. Uh, to the family of Reuben and particularly his party colleagues at Ulster Unionist Party and uh, um, although I didn't know him in person I'm gathering by the tributes that I'm hearing that he was a very uh, well highly thought of individual and will be sadly missed by all in his community and uh, I want to thank Councillor Arnon Rainey for such a lovely tribute to his good friend I imagine that wouldn't have been easy on a time like this but just to have recorded our sympathies as well on behalf of the SDLP. Thank you Chair. Thank you, Councillor Garrity, and I have Councillor Bert Wilson. Just trying to make contact with Councillor Wilson now. So, okay, members, we just can't seem to reach Councillor Wilson, but we'll allow him in at a later stage. So we'll just we'll just ask one more time if Councillor Wilson can hear the chamber. 
no response. Thank you, members, for those uh, kind words. Members may also have heard of the passing of Councillor Stevenson's father, Edward, also known as John, who was buried this afternoon. And on behalf of all members, I extend our deepest sympathy to Paul and his wider family. Uh, I'm also content if uh, members would now uh, wish to make any statements in regard to this also. And I have uh, Councillor Keith Elliott in the chamber here. Thank you very much, Chair. Well, just on behalf of, the, of our group, and I'd just like to pass on our sympathies to the Steven Stevenson family at this time. Thank you. Thank you. And I have uh, Collier Tomas McGear. I'm going to Margaret Kearney. Thanks for that, Chair. Uh, again, uh, apologies, I wasn't aware that uh, Mr. Stevenson's uh, father had passed away, but I would wish to extend the sympathy of the Sinn Féin group uh, to Paul on this sad occasion. Gurmagan. Gurmagan, thank you. And I have Councillor Robert Irvine. Uh, whilst I don't know Councillor Stevenson personally, I know of him by reputation. I pass on the condolences of the Ulster Unionist Party on his bereavement. Thank you. Thank you. And I have Councillor Paul Blake. Thanks, Chair. Also didn't know uh, Councillor Stephen Stevenson personally, but on behalf of the FDLP group, I'd like to extend my sympathy also. Thank you. Now, on WebEx, there are a number of hands raised. Um, I have Councillor Mark Buchanan. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, just see if we can get maybe Councillor Wilson, his hand is also raised. So we're just uh, moving down the list. Um, so I have Councillor uh, Josephine in with her hand raised. Hello. Oh. Thank Hello. you, Chair. Uh, well, I, I think that appears to be Councillor Wilson. So I'll, I'll give Councillor way then. So, Chair, thank uh, you. Uh, very, very great. Chair, I'm, uh, no, I, I, for some reason or other, I just can't get through. But anyway, I, I'm uh, really... Uh, I uh, sad for the uh, loss of our uh, elderly council councillor, and I was one of the lucky people who served a year or a term with him in Oma Legacy Council, and I would uh, associate with uh, Councillor Rennie's very uh, well-deserved uh, tribute to. Uh, I had uh, visited him some time back, and he was really delighted to see me, and he had the the usual. Uh, I uh, laugh and talk and all the rest and uh, remission over the years as to the uh, happenings in Oma Council. Uh, I will not uh, go on, as I say, Councillor Rennie did say all of what I would have liked to say. Uh, and uh, I would uh, pass on uh, my condolences to the family. And uh, we will always remember uh, Ruben is a very loyal member of the, the party and uh, a very friendly, you, you always had a bit of crack and a joke when you had Ruben there. No matter what the company was, he could always bring out uh, something to, uh, that, uh, to pass on to the, the people to, uh, that he would enjoy. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. And uh, apologies, I'll go back to Councillor Dehan now. Thank you, Chair. Um, and I too am just learning of the death of Councillor Paul Stevenson's father. And I do want to extend my condolences to him and to his family. Chair, uh, the death of a parent uh, is really a life-changing event in anyone's life. And the sense of loss and the sense of grief uh, is, is immense and immeasurable. So I certainly uh, feel for Councillor Stevenson at this sad time and, and, and uh, I would like to offer my sincere condolences. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I have uh, Councillor Mark Buchanan hand is also raised. 
or from, possibly from earlier. Yeah. So just if your hands have been raised on an earlier item, maybe just to bring them down now. Yeah. So thank you again to all members who expressed their uh, words. There are two other bereavements which I would like to bring to members' attention. We were saddened to learn of the death of Oliver McCullough from Greencastle, who was buried this morning. Oliver was the founder of the Greencastle Road 5 uh, road race, which is held on the 26th of December each year and is one of the largest community athletic events on the island of Ireland. This morning, we also learned of the death of Fred Tiernan. Fred was a passionate advocate of the heritage and folklore of Loch Erne and provided invaluable assistance to the council on a number of projects, not least the Loch Erne Cot at the Ardoan. We extend our deepest sympathies to Oliver and Fred's families, and the chair on our behalf will issue a letter of sympathy on our behalf and on behalf of the council. And, uh, again, we pass on our deepest sympathies to um, their families at this time. Okay, members, so moving on to tonight's agenda, and item number one is apologies. Uh, I've received no apologies um, tonight, so I'll just go to each of the groupings, starting with the Sinn Féin party group. Just uh, one apology for lateness from Councillor Fitzgerald. Gormagat. Gormagat. And next to the uh, UUP party. Thank you, Chair. Uh, no apologies from the Ulster Unionists this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And now to the Democratic Unionist Party, Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Earl Thompson and Councillor Stevenson. Thank you. Thank you. And to the SDLP party. So we have Councillor Paul Blake in the chamber here. Yeah, just to say that Councillor John Coyle will be late on coming on. And also just what you just said there now, Chair, is to pass on my sympathy. I knew Fred Ternan quite well through the Locker and Yacht Club, and I was very good friends with his daughter at university days, and he was a real gentleman who was very passionate about the lakes around here, who fought for years with the, over the ferry boats. He was a great man for that, so the deepest sympathy to his family because he was uh, a very passionate supporter of the lakes around here. Thank you, Councillor Blake. Uh, at, this, at this point in time, just before I proceed to the um, single member parties and independents, I'd like to just ask if call in user two could identify themselves for us, please. Call in user two. Hello. Uh, Councillor Sean Clark here. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Clark. We're familiar with that by now. So. Okay. Gordon okay. Mogget. Uh, so now to the single member parties or independents, if there are any um, apologies. So I see is that Councillor Emmett McAleer's hands raised. Thanks, Chair, just getting myself unmuted there. Um, and no apologies that I'm aware, but I'd just like to make a brief comment in relation to the passing of Oliver McCullough from my own DA, if that's all right. And I'll be very brief, just being mindful yep. of the time already spent. Obviously, uh, as you mentioned, the funeral was today and I, I'm glad and I thank you for, for mentioning it and, and offering condolences from the council. Uh, I had requested that of the chair and, and I'm glad that you've done that in his absence. Um, at the at the funeral this morning, we heard from the priest how Oliver was possibly the greatest son of Greencastle and also a man who has put Greencastle on the map with the five mile road race that he has there that he has long established now the 30, 36th year just passed moving into the 37th his loss obviously is one that's hard for the community hard for his friends and for his neighbors but most keenly felt obviously by his family so just to send obviously all our thoughts and condolences to his wife mary to his sons connor and pierce and to his daughter olivia to their partners and to his eight grandchildren 
first and foremost, um, Oliver was a family man. He obviously wouldn't be one for the spotlight and wouldn't uh, want a big deal made about uh, offering condolences or being talked about, in his, especially not in his absence. But uh, just to quote the, the page that that he ran himself and, and that he established and one of the longest running road races here, that he fought the good fight, he ran the good race and he's yet again crossed the finish line. He'll never be forgotten. May his laboured hands rest in peace. Are you sure you're a young man? Gormagat or Kjallrug? Gormagat, Horlur. Yeah, and I, I just have Councillor Josephine Dehan's hand raised, just still for apologies. Sorry, Chair, I thought I had taken my hand down. Yeah, that's thank no you. problem, Councillor, thank you. So, OK, members, so that's um, any apologies recorded. So um, I will now just move to uh, item two, which is the minutes of the Council meeting, just to confirm and sign minutes of Council meeting, which was held on the 1st of February. Um, just to go page by page, for accuracy. So page one, page two, page three, page four. Okay, sorry, page three, uh, Councillor McAleer wishes to come in just for accuracy, Councillor. Thanks, Sherry. I just taking a wee second to get unmuted there. No, the it's actually page two, and it's in relation to the declarations of interest. Uh, it notes our agenda item eight point four, which it notes is the Irish League of Trade Unions has requested a meeting. Uh, two councillors expressing an interest in relation to that, but I think it was actually the League of Trade or of Credit Unions. Um, and also just I suppose uh, as a follow on from that. One of the councillors who had expressed an interest was actually the same councillor who proposed uh, adopting or arranging a meeting on the, the noting of the correspondence. So just in relation to that, I don't know if that needs to be revisited or checked, but uh, just on a point of accuracy, it was, I believe, I'm sure, as, as much as we would like to have Councillor Michael Duff and Councillor Wilson in the Irish League of Trade Unions, I think it was the, the credit unions that I was referring to. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, that doesn't need to be uh, revisited. I've had it confirmed, but thank you. So, and it will be amended um, accordingly. Thank you. So, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page. Oh, yeah, Councillor McAleer, your hand is um, still raised. Do you wish to come in again? It's been taken down now, okay. So page 10, page 11, page 12, page 13, page 14, page 15, and page 16. So I will sign now on behalf of the chairperson. So just a proposer and seconder for that, if I could have a proposer and seconder, please. So we have, yep, yeah, Councillor Irvine and Councillor Maguire, or Mogul. Remember, so um, on then to item three, which is minutes of the special council meeting, um, which was held on the 14th of February, 2022. Again, just for accuracy, I'll go through this page by page. See, Councillor Keenan is indicated here. Um, Collier. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just yeah, on the minutes of the special council meeting, I don't yeah. believe they accurately portray everything that happened within the meeting. There was well, concern just, just, raised at the end of the meeting by two members, and they were muted. There was other councillors. Well, councillor, just at this stage. To speak. Um, just so councillor, sorry, just at this at this stage, we're just checking the minutes for happened. accuracy. Councillor, yeah, just asked that you be. Councillor, just asked that you be. Uh, they're, they're not accurate. You respect the chair. Councillor, just asked you respect the chair. I when I respect the chair, but uh, I will. Well, at the moment, accurate. we're checking for accuracy, so we will go back. If you have yeah. any items, you can raise that at the appropriate time. But we're going yeah, through uh, page by page. Uh, That's the process we use here. Yeah. Thank you. So, 
page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page 10, So again, I'll sign just on behalf of the chair. So again, just to have a proposer and seconder for those. And if we, um, yeah, Councillor Rossidonlo Coffey has indicated and Councillor Tommy McGuire. So if I could just go back to Councillor Keenan and just um, ask that he um, specify, specify where the um, Inaccuracy was on which page? Yeah, just don't know. Yeah, sorry, Councillor. Um, try that again there, Councillor Keenan. Back on again there, yeah. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear now. Yeah, so that um, that minute has been adopted now, okay? Uh, hold on a second, where are we are? Yeah. Okay, so the papers have been signed, uh, councillors. We're going to just um, proceed on, okay? Chair, I'm finally getting in here. I, I have my hand raised there. I don't know what's happening here. I thought Councillor um, uh, Eamon Keenan was coming in before me. Uh, well, we, we had tried to reach Councillor Keenan. We couldn't um, gain contact there. Um, Councillor Coffey, so if you wish to make a comment now. Is this just for accuracy and, the, and just the papers have been signed and adopted? So if it's in relation to the last item, Uh, Chair, these locks are on and they're causing chaos yet again. Um, people are being muted or and whatever. Um, I wanted to raise an issue around uh, page um, the, uh, the the what, the voting in this. Um, well, well Councillor, Councillor, just sorry, just to say that the papers have been signed and have been adopted. Um, there was opportunity for members to come in as I raised it page by page. Um, yeah, I had my hand up on page nine, so. Uh, it seems to be becoming a, a habit now that uh, people are just racing beyond uh, so, okay, to get well, business we'll, done ahead of people. Okay, well, Councillor, we'll come back to you at Matters Horizon then, okay? We'll come back at the appropriate time under Matters Horizon. Okay, so at this point, members, I'm just looking for uh, declarations of interest in any of the items on tonight's agenda. So um, at this stage, if members wish to indicate any declarations of interest. So I'm not receiving any declarations. So I'm happy to proceed then to uh, item five, which is matters arising. So again, back to um, the uh, paper from the council meeting. So, okay, so item uh, item five then matters arising. So again, just page one. Page two, page two, Chief Executive. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Page two, just to uh, draw members' attention to correspondence received from the Department for Communities. This was in relation to the request for funding for Clogher Valley Rugby Club. And the letter advises there's no current funding streams available, but have signposted the club to Sport NI and also to DERA. So we'd we'll be suggesting, Chair, the correspondence would be noted and officers will certainly bring this, this uh, correspondence to the club's attention. Okay, thank you, uh, Chief Executive. So, members, just a uh, proposer and seconder to note. Yeah, so, with councillors uh, Elliot and Councillor Irvine here in the chamber. Thank you. So, uh, page three. Yeah, so, Councillor McAleer, your hand is raised. 
You can come in here now. Yeah, just get again on muted chair. That's this meeting hasn't started off on the right foot at all here. There's a a, a number of issues to raise. Starting yeah, with the minute. Sorry, just page three of the paper. Councillor page three of the papers, papers that we've been looking at. You can't. You haven't spoken of or anybody else apart from Councillor Keenan. Could you please uh, afford the independence, the same respect you give everybody else? There's a matter of rela in relation. Well, Councillor, we're, we're on page three of, of matters arising. Councillor, we're on page three of matters arising, so everyone else is able to follow the agenda. So, just ask that if you have any items in relation yes, to. Yes, Chair, I've had my hand up from page nine of the previous minutes, which you adopted. And you, you said Councillor O'Coffey was yeah, adopted. This is, this, this is with matters arising. Do you have any? Had issues do you have any particular matter arising that you wish to raise? Yes, Chair, on page two, and you've already rifled okay, well, that go, as go well. Go on ahead, then. Happy to hear it. And for clarity, who has who has been recorded as adopting the minutes? Because Councillor Coffey clearly doesn't support the minutes. He wanted to raise an issue on that. You took it as him second. Like the, it's a farcical. Uh, Councillor, this yeah. that was for the, those papers for were accuracy. Now is the time to raise matters arising. I did have proposals yeah, not chair, by people again, in the chamber. Councillor Coffey wished to raise a point of accuracy, and you moved on, yeah. taking him as second and supporting the adoption Cons of the minutes. Chair, the last time you Councillor, just chair, just at this stage, a point right. of order. Could you please, Councillor, could you please tonight. just raise your right, your matter rising? You've been afforded the opportunity in, to do so now. So just what raise um, well, your item, please. Yeah, thank thanks to the people who elected me, Chair, and no thanks to yourself, I might add. In relation to the point in question, uh, I'm I'm fully supportive and, and congratulate the Clogher Club on their successes, and I think we should be absolutely following on and investigating how we can. Uh, seek for their fund and seek for their support for them so i'm fully happy and fully supportive of that in relation to uh the the congratulations that was offered to them i would like to make a, a, a related proposal to uh, the council to actually offer congratulations to a resident within my own da and within our council district area neve o'neill who this season has been appointed as the captain of the Tyrone ladies team she's a young lady from greencastle with a very promising future in ladies Gaelic football and I would like to record that our commendation on re reaching the, the the heights of a of gaining the captaincy of our county at such an early at such a young age and wish her every success for the future chair but I, I'd make that as a proposal but I would really like to see the issue surrounding the previous minutes revisited chair thank you thank you councillor so we have a proposal from councillor McAleer do we have any seconders I see Councillor O'Coffey has his hand raised. So Councillor Coffey, do you wish a second Councillor McAleer's proposal? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I'm happy to second it. I, I, I will be raising an issue at uh, page nine in relation to something I wanted to raise as a matter of accuracy, but you've obviously uh, went ahead. And I certainly want to highlight that I didn't propose the accuracy of these minutes. Yeah, OK, thank, that's OK, Councillor O'Coffey. So, We'll come to back to you at the appropriate time. Uh, Councillor um, Collier Siobhan the Curry here in the chamber. Um, and just on a related matter as well, just when we're talking about offering congratulations to um, people in the district, um, could I request that um, congratulations are sent on behalf of the councillors to Denise Toner. She won two gold medals for Ireland in the European Championships this week. Um, I believe she uh, teaches in Erin North, originally Harlden from um, Rossley. So just to send our huge congratulations to Denise. I think there was also another medalist there too, and uh, name escaped me at the minute, Chair, but just a huge achievement there on the two goals there, Gormagat. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Chair Gormagat. So um, do we have a seconder for um, Councillor Curry? Or, yeah, Councillor Anthony Feely. Thank you, members. So, proceeding on then to page three. And I see uh, Councillor Diana Armstrong has her hand raised. So, Councillor Armstrong, you wish to come in? Yes, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to, to echo, and, and I was going, going to try to second um, Councillor Curry's um, congratulations there. Um, Denise T Toner, fantastic um, achievement, and she is humble enough to come back and visit her school, St Mary's College in Irvinstown, and received a very warm welcome there. So um, delighted for her. Huge congratulations from us all. Thank you. Thank you. 
Chair, also on page three, if I may just draw members' attention to correspondence received from the uh, Minister for Infrastructure's office. It's in your other correspondence folder and it's dated the 25th of February. And this is regarding the removal of the street lighting at Abbey Terrace, Fintna. So in summary, the letter sets out the adoption criteria and the reasons for the removal of the infrastructure in question and advises that it's not going to be reinstated by the department. Thank you, Alison. So again, um, members of proposer to, um, to note and a seconder, please. Yeah, Councillor O'Coffey. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, this letter, I'm happy uh, to propose to note it, but uh, it's um, it's very concerning. Uh, effectively, and it's you don't have to read between the lines here. It's fairly overt. The Department for Infrastructure is doing away with our responsibility um, uh, on the grounds that the area was not adopted. Uh, this is happening in towns and villages across our district. And even worse, the three conditions that they list on the second page, uh, which state that they they can only uh, consider a private street for adoption, uh, not, uh, two of which are obviously related to uh, whether the frontagers re requested or not, and whether the frontagers actually pay for the road to be brought up to adoption standard, uh, and uh, that it has to become a public road. So uh, this is a real another attack, and I'm sure other councillors will recognise this on uh, rural communities. Um, it's uh, effectively asking the public to uh, subsidise something that has been provided by the public uh, services in the past, and the consequences they don't ha they haven't conducted a risk assessment because they're claiming it was never adopted. So um, they're washing their hands of responsibility. We know that there's an uptick in attacks on women uh, and other sort of forms of crime. Uh, and how is it that the Department for Infrastructure can basically turn the lights off on uh, in, in areas which are dark and potentially dangerous? And I know uh, Councillor Wilson's raised this previously, but uh, you know this is this is happening in villages and towns in Inniskillen. It's happening as well. Uh, this is completely unacceptable. So. Um, again, I, I, I'm not sure how we can uh, highlight it. Uh, sending another uh, letter back to the department uh, seems to just uh, get nowhere. But uh, this is completely unacceptable. And uh, maybe there needs to be uh, a, a request to the, the health and safety executive to ask, is this, uh, uh, why aren't uh, health and risk assessments being uh, conducted on decisions which leave people vulnerable uh, in the darkness or in, uh, for attack? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor, and your, your comments have been well made there. Um, so, next I have Councillor Thornton. Uh, okay, Chair, you can hear me now, yeah. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear, Councillor. Okay, no, I wish to come in and support the comments uh, made by Councillor O'Coffey. This is a disaster, and uh, health and safety, uh, I, I totally agree, you know, with support and second, his uh, proposal to write the health and safety about it. Uh, totally unacceptable. Fully agree with him. Thank you. Thank you. And I have Councillor Bert Wilson. So, Councillor, we can see you, but we can't hear you. No, there's obviously an audio issue there with Councillor Wilson's side. Okay, hey, members, well, it was um, proposed to note. I uh, just need a seconder. I'm sure that Councillor Councillor did second it. Okay, so proposed and seconded then. Thank you for, for that. Uh, Yeah, well, it, it was mentioned there that um, we could write to the HSE, the Health and Safety Executive, if all members would be content at that, it might be another avenue to go down with this issue. And I'm not seeing any dissent, so I'll take that as agreed. So on then to um, the next page, um, page five. 
Thank you, Chair. Just uh, page five to highlight the letter received from the Western Health and Social Care Trust. Chair, there were really two aspects to this. It was specifically related to the uh, primary care multidisciplinary teams, the provision, first of all, at the OMA hospital site, but also then we had requested further clarification on the options that had been explored in Irvinstown. So really, the letter, first of all, sets out, um, I think, maybe a slightly changed emphasis from the Trust in relation to whether or not the provision will actually be made available at OMA, given the, the change in uh, priorities and the uh, the issue regarding what other sites were assessed in Irvinstown is not really dealt with in the correspondence uh, other than to say that no suitable premises were were identified. Okay, thank you Alison. Um, so again there are a number of hands raised. I'll go to Councillor Wilson, sorry Policy Councillor Josephine Dehan. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Alison, uh, for your report. Um, well, uh, first of all, I want to uh, welcome this letter from uh, Mr. Guckin. Um, uh, some aspects of it are, however, disappointing, and I'll come to those in a second. Um, what is encouraging is um, uh, the, the, the inference that the Southwest GP Federation will shortly have rollout of its multidisciplinary teams and and we have had confirmation uh, from a variety of sources that that will proceed uh, later this autumn um, one of the issues that i have highlighted on numerous occasions in the council is the accommodation issue and mr guckian reports in his letter that negotiations have been ongoing uh, with the trust uh, and uh, the gp practices in oma hospital since 2019. In fact, the, the, the facts of the matter are that we have a large, uh, readily available shell space waiting to be fitted out, lying vacant through the height of the pandemic when we were all really scrambling to get extra space in our practices. And I just feel that this is unacceptable. Mr. Guckian references in this letter and in previous correspondence this concern regarding properly uh, uh, proper funding uh, but uh, you know such is the crisis that faces primary care at present uh, that we urgently need to ensure that those multidisciplinary teams can hit the ground running so i would like to propose chair uh, that we we write back to mr guckian emphasizing the urgency uh, of these matters, reminding him of the commitment to the GP practices in OMA, OMA Primary Care Centre regarding the, their ability to access that shell space, and also urging him to look again at, at Enniskillen Health Centre, Irvinstein Health Centre, and indeed other primary care facilities throughout uh, our district council area to look at ways in which accommodation issues can be addressed. That will involve uh, investment of resources, but I think it's fundamental to the success of the multidisciplinary teams, which are in turn essential to the survi survival of, of primary care in this region. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor uh, Dehan, for that. Yep, you've made your proposal. Um, so I'll go to now uh, in the chamber here, Corlior Siobhan Curry. Corlior, let it hold. Um, yeah, uh, um, just uh, specifically, um, and I take on board uh, Corlior Dean's comments there around Noma, um, but previously just been talking about the Irvinstown um, and the the lack of accommodation there for the multidisciplinary teams. It, it is really concerning um, and we've we've been over that in the past. And um, as Alison says, there's not a lot of answers really in this letter. I think we'd sought more information. The final paragraph um, says that there there's no immediately available um, solutions that would facilitate MDT expansion, but in the short term, but that they're going to um work to continue to identify and fully scope but that's a bit fluffy in my opinion chair and uh you know multidisciplinary teams are crucial you know and, and should be available certainly in every locality 
And one of the questions I, I believe we'd asked um, was around what conversations they were having maybe with others um, in the area that the, if there was any potential for the multidisciplinary teams to be, um, you know, maybe based close to then the health centre in Irvington. I think anybody who knows the health centre there knows it is actually a very constrained site. And I would actually say that creates issues in itself in terms of um, just trying to get around that end of town and, and for patients, no doubt, getting in and out. So um, I don't know. Uh, I think if, if Corlier Dean, and I appreciate she refers to it in the proposal she's made there, but I think we just need more information on what exactly they are doing um, in terms of scoping. I don't think that this kind of fluffy statement just at the end is good enough. We, we want to see who are they talking to? Um, can we be of any help? Uh, you know, are they using the whole um, community plan and aspect chair? So if Collier Dean's happy enough just to include that too, Chair. Gorm yeah. Margaret, uh, Collier, and we'll just go back to Councillor Dehan just to uh, clarify if she's happy with Councillor Curry's amendment. Yes, uh, Chair, thank you. And thank you, uh, Councillor Curry, for that. And uh, if I didn't say, Chair, I propose to note the correspondence. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, Councillor Curry, then are you happy on that basis to second Councillor Dehan's proposal? We'll be right back to Mr. Gucky on, on those issues. Okay, thank you, Councillors. Um, I have now Councillor Donalo Coffey next. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, uh, I, I, I'm in support of the, uh, the comments by the former, both two uh, councillors there. Uh, I think they're well made. I, I note, and I just think it's important to note that our original correspondence to the, uh, uh, Mr. the chief executive stated, uh, actually questioned specifically, the whole point of our correspondence is what other, uh, as to what other accommodation options the trust has explored, which is the question we're now going back to answer again, or ask again. Uh, and they didn't answer it in the first time. Uh, the the fact that they've basically allowed it just to recognise that there's no uh, no capacity in the centre, and at this time, certainly for Irvinstone, there are no immediately available solutions. So it's um, there's, it's almost like a, a, a another Pontius Pilate case of um, washing the hands of responsibility here. Uh, the, we we uh, only last week we had another representative from the GP Federation in the southwest saying every single practice in our con uh, council area. Uh, is under uh, threat of uh, collapse and the only thing that we've been offered is a sticky plaster effectively is these multidisciplinary teams uh, yes there seems to be some indication we may get funding in autumn it should have happened probably already uh, if there was any uh, uh, movement from Stormont but obviously we've had the collapse of the institutions which has now put it off until after the re-establishment of a functioning executive and how long that could take anyone is, is anyone's guess um, all of this is up in the air, and even if we do get the money for the MDTs, uh, we now don't even have anywhere for them to be accommodated. And in Irvinstown, which is a, a major uh, centre for services, has been uh, announced, there's absolutely no uh, response when it comes to what alternative accommodation has been assessed. Uh, and, and I think uh, Councillor Curry makes a good point. Why, why aren't they we looking at alternative provision if there is, uh, if there simply is not enough there? But there are other centres here. What, what, where's the accommodation in those cases? Uh, uh, th this is completely inadequate. I'm supportive of the proposal, but I would just like to ask, if possible, uh, if Councillor Dehan would accept a change, just to s ask what um, w uh, has the uh, the the Health uh, Trust conducted any assessment on uh, the failure to provide this for the access to health services in this area, because uh, this is a fundamental human rights issue. If people can't access primary care because of the lack of uh, doctors and we can't access any form of primary care because there's no money for MDTs and there's nowhere to even accommodate MDTs if there is money, um, surely that's a human rights issue. So I think we should actually request them to ask, uh, how are they uh, fulfilling their role, uh, responsibilities to afford access to uh, local primary care services in, in our uh, council area? Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor. And um, we'll just clarify with Councillor Dehan if she would be happy to accept that amendment also. It is, I know it is a, a slightly different issue. Yeah, Councillor Dehan, you're muted. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Chair. Apologies for the delay in unmuting. Uh, yes, I would be happy to incorporate uh, Councillor, Councillor O'Coffey's proposal. Uh, it is indirectly an access issue because in order to improve access to primary care services, we need additional supportive uh, allied health professionals and uh, accommodation for these uh, professionals is absolutely fundamental. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And um, just uh, go back to Councillor Curry here in the chamber. Yes, Gurmagata Kerley, just to expand just a bit further on the point, appreciate you letting me back in, it's only very brief, but just in terms of the role that we might play, would there be any potential for any of our facilities, such as the nearby Bonacre? Um, is, is that something we could explore, Chair Alison, and maybe, um, I don't know, maybe come back on that, but just to, to maybe look at that as well? I'll just allow Alison to come in here on that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chair. Chair, certainly we could scope out. I suppose it would be useful. We could clarify with the Trust what the requirements uh, would be, and then we could certainly scope out against any of our facilities in the Irvinstown area, so including the Bonacre. Happy to do that. Okay, so I have uh, three councillors with their hands raised, Councillor Swift, Wilson and Armstrong. So in that order, I'll take Councillor Bernice Swift. Oh, apologies, apology, sorry, Councillor Swift, just to go back to Councillor Curry uh, finally and then to finish off okay. this. Just to make a proposal of that then, Chair Gurmogan. Yeah. So proposed by Councillor um, Curry. Councillor Bernice Swift. Yeah, Gurmogan, Kerlock, and uh, this has been a disappointing response in the very fact that the questions were not answered. So, and while I do note in the letter, it does say it's important to point out the agreement made about the change in context of service delivery regarding COVID-19. And we all fully understand the competing space pressures. Again, we still need a response, a, a, a definitive response. And of course, it requires much needed investment. And as has already been pointed out, uh, such as the structures who have the full responsibility for this not up and running are failing us yet again. How can we possibly proceed with our proposed shift left agenda and all of the other consultation documents if we don't have properly invested services that everybody will require at some point. And I'm fully supportive of the needs of all of the multidisciplinaries to be working in partnership with all of the other services to have a fantastic primary care supported service. And I would like also, along with the letter, um, that we have this question properly and fully answered at our upcoming meeting next week with the Health, Western Health and Social Care uh, Service, the managers and directors, please. So I'd ask Alison to please put that firmly on the agenda for a response rather than us having to wait again another month for perhaps a, a nil answer to our questions. Gormagat. Gormagat, uh, Councillor Swift, um, do you want to for just a second Councillor Curry's proposal that we look at uh, using council facilities also? Yeah, so an indication there. Yep. Yeah, okay, thank you, Councillor Swift. So proposed and seconded. Um, so next I have Councillor uh, Diana Armstrong. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I want to pick up on, on something that Councillor Curry said, and it's in relation to our Evanstown, and it's the community planning um, partnership. It's that aspect. And, and we do have representatives from the health service at our, our community planning meetings. Um, Irvinstown itself, I'm disappointed. I'm not satisfied that they're saying there's no immediate solutions there. There is a solution um, of the asymptomatic test centre at Telegarn on the Lisnaric Road. The, the Ark Healthy Living Centre has used that for asymptomatic testing. So I think if the trust could widen its vision, I think there may be facilities within the immediate area. Um, and I'd ask that that is explored as well, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, um, Councillor. So Next, I'll go to uh, Councillor John McClory. Thank you, Chair. Obviously, uh, local knowledge is, is a great help on this. Um, the Tully Gar site's there, and it's available al already. Also, uh, Evanstown Health Centre was originally the, the starship of the uh, Fermanagh County Health Board, 
and, and that's how old the building is. But also the Fermanagh County Library worked off the same site. Those buildings then were taken over by, partially taken over by the Fermanagh District Council. And uh, the car park at the back of the health centre belongs to the council, as do the garages and, and offices to the left-hand side of the car park. I believe those are currently used for storage by the museum. I, I don't know whether that's true or not, but those buildings there also are available and can be used as well. It may not be just as easy as some of the other sites that have been mentioned, but they are very close to the health centre. Whilst it is cramped, they are sitting there and they do belong to the council. So those buildings need to be included in any sort of plans that we have with the system, especially as it's for the good of the community and they do belong to the council. And I, I don't know whether these it's been reviewed what these buildings are going to be used for, but the, the, the DOE water service did work out of them at a time. Uh, but I know that the, the council currently have uh, ownership of them and they still have ownership of the car park at the back of the health centre as well, as I fought for two years to get a tarmac. So I wonder if we could include that, if the councillors would include that in the proposals. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, thank you, councillor, for that. And again, local knowledge um, is taking precedence here. So um, just to go back to uh, councillor Curry, just to ask whether she's happy to incorporate um, councillor Armstrong and McClory's, um amendments there. Yes, Gormagata Kerley, yes. Yeah, sorry, I mentioned the Bon Acre because it was the first one that sprung to mind, but I mean a general scope um, of, of what we have available as a council, but if there's anything else in the area, yeah, whatever we can scope. Thank you. So that's all reflected in your proposal then. Thanks very much. And um, finally, now I have Councillor Bert Wilson. So Councillor Wilson, if you wish to come in. It's unmuted, but he just can't. Chair, here we go. Oh, we can hear you now, Councillor Wilson. Uh, Chair, yes, I have been trying to get up for, and for quite a while uh, to do with different things, but uh, no, I would agree with uh, what uh, uh, Councillor McLaherty, yes, obviously knows that area, and uh, I would agree with uh, what he says, that would be the proper line to go down, and it, it, it does show the, the local knowledge as well, but... Uh, I do seem to have. A, I was trying to get my hand down actually, and I could. I don't. I don't know there's up or down, but I couldn't get it anywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. You're just you're just waving at us then. So, um, yeah. thanks very much, Councillor Wilson, for that then. Um, so members, that's the item dealt with. Um, the proposals were made. So, going back to page six then. Page six, Alison, the Chief Executive, is in. Yes, thank you, Chair. Chair, there's a correspondence here from the Department for the Economy, and this is in relation to the Council's uh, correspondence really setting out some information requests that are detailed in the minutes. So if, there's two items, Chair. Uh, the first, the 14th of February, is advising that the Department is dealing with this request as an environmental uh, information regulation. And then the second uh, piece of correspondence, which is an email, and appended to that is a spreadsheet. So in summary, the department has asked if we want to uh, narrow down the request for information as they um, hold significant uh, quantum of information relating to this matter dating back more than two and a half years. So it's, it's really just to see, Chair, if members wish this to be filtered in any way, or if we just stick with the original submission, uh, which is also included in your correspondence. Thank you, Chief Executive. And I have Councillor Emmett McAleer indicating through WebEx. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, um, yeah, again, just reading through the response, like it shows the, the attention to detail today when the, this department employs when they can't even spell the, the name of the person they're responding to, which is written several lines above the, the line that they've typed. Um, I noticed that the email is dated the 14th of February and in the body of the response it's, it states that the the person in, in who has composed the letter, John White, is in a position to answer the first three points quite quickly. I'm wondering now, uh, a number of weeks later, have the first three points been addressed in the interim? Have we got a response on that? Um, secondly, uh, in the same paragraph they note that there are the documents to be scrutinised by the department, which they may deem 
ne uh, necessary to fully or partially redact. Uh, I'm wondering what sort of content or what sort of information would the department have that they willing, wouldn't willing to be shared with the local planning authority. In relation to the, the response, the the list of uh, the list of documents noted, 20 of the 39 documents listed are noted as emails. So I would have thought they were fairly straightforward in terms of forwarding them, them on to the council as requested. Perhaps it would be worthwhile going back to the, the department to clarify if there are any documents which present a particular problem and maybe they could advise us on them. But I would be sticking with our original request. There's there as as the chief executive has noted there, there's a, a quite a quite a list of documents there. I would be keen to get the council get in, getting their hands on all of them. But maybe the department could advise which documents they're they're having particular difficulty with or having a particular uh, problem with. So I would propose that we do get back with those points, Chair. Thank you. Okay, um, councillor. So you propose that we look for uh, all documents, and as uh, Alison has come no, to just, just respond just to councillor McAleer's query, chair. We've received nothing uh, further in terms of the other three points which are referenced. So just the correspondence before you this evening is the only correspondence we've received on this request. Yeah. Uh, in the chamber, I have councillor Victor Warrington wishing to speak. So councillor Warrington. Thank you, Chair. Uh, well, obviously, um, there's been a time frame of two and a half years mentioned there of, of trawling back uh, through, uh, no doubt, uh, huge amounts of information. Um, that is obviously going to take uh, time and resources to do that. Um, and I certainly think, uh, again, we would be wasting, we would be wasting officers' time in, in, in carrying out uh, this sort of of uh, this sort of thing, uh, so what I would be proposing is that we note the correspondence, and certainly if, if Councillor McAleer wants to uh, for the pursue this, uh, why doesn't he su submit a freedom of information request uh, to to the department? Um, and that's obviously something he can do in his own time. Uh, instead of using up uh, uh, council officers' valuable time. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Warrington, thank you. You've made that proposal. So um, I'll just bring in Councillor Keenan. Um, just Councillor McAleer will need a seconder for his original proposal. So Councillor Keenan, are you happy to second? Uh, yeah, well, I suppose in this forum, I'm very happy to second that we yes, on the con. Just, Councillor Keenan, sorry, if you could just check your network, we're just having difficulty, we're just having difficulty uh, hearing you, just maybe you check your connection. Just, yeah. Can you just, just go, from, go from the beginning. Yeah. It's not great, no. Can you go from the beginning, please? Yeah, so just, uh, you know, for openness, yeah, so for openness and transparency, uh, yes, I would be happy to send the information back. Councillor Warren is suggesting to go down the route of an FOA. We're already on the route here as a council in looking for the information. I don't see why we should fall off that route. We're here for accountability, openness, transparency. Yeah, so you're, um, yeah. You're second, Councillor McAleer's proposal. To be very vocal on the radiant issues. So, yes, very happy to second that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Okay. So, um, I have Councillor Robert Irvine in the chamber wishing to speak. So I'm just coming in to second Councillor Warrington's proposal. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, thank you very much. Right, so, yeah. So we'll just take Councillor O'Coffey now, and then we'll go to Councillor McAleer's proposal. So, Councillor O'Coffey, if you wish to speak. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I have to say uh, I, I'm, I'm supportive of uh, what Councillor McAleer said there, um, and uh, I'm certainly not supportive of what Councillor Warrington is saying. This council has a policy in relation to uh, the, the toxic gold mining threat, um, and uh, obviously this is a matter of huge concern to residents. Um, it's not something that we can uh, you know, uh, hand over to uh, our responsibility for as a, a corporate body. We are here to represent the interests of our people and if there are genuine concerns 
Uh, we need to uh, uh, obtain all the information required for it. And uh, frankly, when I saw John White's name, it is hugely reminiscent of attempts to find out information in regard to fracking. It's the exact same person who sent almost the exact same answers about not declaring in, uh, information or there's too much information, too much hassle to provide it to people. We actually had the situation where people were actually banned from asking questions under freedom of information. I had to go to information commissioner because uh, they didn't want to give the information. And is that where we're going to go to? So that it's actually very important, it's invaluable that this council would take the lead in trying to find this information. So I'm uh, very supportive of Councillor McAleer's proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Coffey. I'll just ask Councillor Keenan if he could take his hand down just as we are going to go to the proposal by Councillor McAleer now. You just take your hand down. Yep. yep. Okay, members, so we have two proposals in front of us. Um, first from Councillor Emmett McAleer, seconded by uh, Councillor Keenan, to request that we uh, have all documents um, in, on this matter. So um, if members are agreed, we can... Okay, and we've just seen Councillor McAleer has requested a recorded vote, so um, that will be popping up on your screens now shortly. Okay, members, thank you for bearing with us on that. So um, the results are in, and it was 24-14 uh, against, so that proposal is carried. Okay, members, so back to matters arising, um, on to page seven. Uh, Councillor Green is indicating here. Uh, Seamus, yeah, go on ahead. Uh, sorry, Chair, uh, it's not important. Go on ahead. Oh. Uh, no problem, Councillor. Um, so, yeah, just back to so page seven. Um, uh, Chief Executive. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just to uh, item 48, the All Ireland Strategic Rail Review. Just to, again, this is in your other correspondence folder, members. Uh, it's a response from the Minister for Infrastructure's office in relation to the All, I I sorry, All Ireland Strategic Rail Review. Um, two aspects to this, Chair. Firstly, we had asked the Minister to set out the next steps, and she had, has advised in terms of the consultation, there have been over 7,000 responses, um, and that the, it's intended the final report will be published in quarter four of 2022. I'm not sure if that's the calendar year, Chair, or the, the financial year. And with regard to the regional strategic transport network plans, uh, really it's saying they'll be they'll be published when they're ready to be published, uh, but there's no further detail as to when that might be. Thank you, Chief Executive. And 
Um, again, members, it's just for uh, noting. So we can have a proposer and seconder to note, please. Uh, we have Councillor Councillor um, Swift and Councillor uh, yeah, Councillor Swift. Do you wish to speak now? Yeah, just very quickly, just to get clarification, Alison, on those two points that you did highlight. You know, what part of the year 2022 are we talking about that that will be presented to us? Because no doubt we will have further matters to come back on. Gurmagat, yes, uh, happy to propose and note the noting. Gurmagat. Gurmagat, uh, Collier, and uh, Collier Barra McGilladiv, UK Danella. Okay, Chair, thank you. Um, just a second, the noting. Uh, it's page seven we're dealing with now, Chair, isn't that right? That's correct, yeah. I, and four seven, uh, the issues with contacting government departments. I'll obviously let you tidy up that first matter, but I wanted to come in on four seven. But if uh, Councillor Swift needed a seconder, I would second. Yeah, yeah she does. She requires a seconder. So if you're happy yeah. to do that now, yeah, happy to do that now. And then whenever you're ready, Chair, I'll talk about item four seven on page seven. Yeah, we're ready and willing now, Councillor. Okay, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, again, um. The question remains, we've had various correspondence from the Department for Economy, you know, statistics, uh, analytics, how many people applied, etc. I don't think we've got a satisfactory answer to this question, the one that is detailed in the resolution there. Um, how are those people who were unable to avail of the £100 spend local card to be compensated? Because I have it's kind of a, a kind of a headache. Uh, I have a list of people who are uh, discommoded by this, who have never ever received their hundred pound. And I remember the Department for Economy, the minister saying, "You know, we will take stock at the end of this uh, process." Does take stock mean that those people are going to be compensated to the tune of one hundred pounds in a different form, a different format? Or is the Department for Economy hoping that this all blows over and that a certain percentage of our people will have been discriminated against? Um, I mean, uh, I've had all kinds of people talk to me about this and uh, I feel overwhelmed as a public representative in not being able to get through on this, not being able to get over the line, not being able to get through. And there's a grave injustice here. So the question remains uh, for Minister Lyons, um, take stock, but what does that mean in the context of those who have uh, been discommoded? Are they going to be compensated £100 in another form? I mean, I, I felt like I wouldn't put this maybe administrative burden on the council, but what central agency is going to collate the names, national insurance numbers, dates of births, addresses of people that we know who have not yet received their £100. And does the Department for Economy think this is, this is over? Or it's not over for those people? Thank you. That's my point, Chair. Uh, yeah, thank you, Councillor. Well made. And uh, I have shared similar experiences as a public representative also, so I can definitely appreci appreciate your frustration. Uh, I have Councillor Green in next. So, um, Councillor Green, come on ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I believe that the Minister has uh, said that there is up to 10,000 people that hasn't got it and that emails were sent out to all of them people uh, and uh, that hopefully the, the, the will then get uh, paid if they respond. Now, I have put in a list of people that hadn't got it. Uh, I'm not sure many on, on it, possibly 40 or more. And I just uh, contacted a number of them, uh, six or seven of them there in the last lock of days to see did they get this email. And none of them uh, had got it. The, I told them to search their, their junk or spam box. Spam box. The, the, they did that. This email wasn't in it. So I made contact with the department today and I actually got through to to somebody within the department who is dealing with this. And uh, he said, uh, contrary to uh, 
what the minister said in re relation to about 10,000. He said 25,000 emails has went out across the north, and but he wasn't able to say uh, how many people has actually received these emails. And uh, so uh, it, it really does seem to be a bit of a mess. Uh, the department's claiming they sent out emails to people that they believe may be entitled to the £100. But then when I contact seven people out of my list, all seven of them hasn't received email. So I genuinely don't know what's going on. And uh, like Barney there, it almost seems as if the department is uh, hoping that this will just go away. I can I can tell, uh, tell you now that uh, myself and my fellow councillors, uh, Barry included, aren't going to let this sit because these people need this on the phone now more than ever. And uh, so I, I'm not so sure what we need to do. Right to the minister seems to be a, a wasted uh, a piece of energy. But I would suggest that we do write again and we ask for clarification in around them 25,000 emails. Uh, I want to know, have there any idea of, of many of these uh, emails is actually, actually uh, uh, torn up? Uh, the, uh, many of them has has been received by the, the people. Um, so um, that that that's what that's what I'm I'm uh, basically asking for. Uh, maybe that we do clarify clarify this. What exactly they're doing? And uh, you know, is is it twenty five thousand? Is it ten thousand? Yeah. What exactly is it? What is the figure? And how? A uh, way can they not set up a phone number uh, for people so that they can contact? Uh, the department directly uh, 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 allocate a few people to telephones that people can actually uh, uh, ring directly to them uh, uh, and I would uh, suggest that we would suggest that to them in the letter so I'm proposing that we do write around that I know it's a bit of a rambling uh, speech of mine but I'm sure we'll be able to pick the bones out of a letter there uh, on them points that I've raised so uh, uh, that'll be my proposal. Yeah, Gordon Mogget, thank you. Councillor Green will pick out the good parts of that, surely. Um, so um, you've made your proposal. I'll be right back to the Minister. Um, we have uh, Councillor O'Coffey in next. So just, Councillor, do you wish to second that proposal? Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm just a drawing. Maybe Councillor Green hasn't had a chance to go through the, uh, the minutes for tomorrow's night's meeting, but uh, we have a response detailing uh, this very issue, or uh, not detailing this very issue from the Minister uh, Lyons. Uh, we have asked for this information already, and in the email, uh, we uh, the response that we have tomorrow, it actually states that this information will be made known at some future point, <clears throat> no doubt in the middle of an election campaign or just before it. But um, I think uh, it, we may want to wait until we get to the detail of that to consider the, the response we write in. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Coffey and Councillor Swift in next. Yeah, I would concur with that last point um, because uh, uh, what Seamus has exactly and entirely outlined, uh, those of us also are in the similar experience. Not one of my constituents who fail to receive their £100 has been emailed and I can categorically state that here tonight so that's for information for going back agreed to, to again tomorrow night it's been a, a just a whole rigmarole this whole process and while it was a good idea when it first came out and i embraced it and supported it it has become very dissatisfactory for a lot of constituents and that's just not acceptable and i did report at the last meeting i heard him myself on the evening news stating anybody and everybody who has applied will be reimbursed and to date they still have not and we want to know when and how exactly. Gurmagat. Gurmagat, uh, Councillor. So the last speaker on this then is in the chamber, it's Councillor Anthony Feely. Yeah, I'm not going to get out, go over what everybody else says, but I have the same issues as Barry and Seamus. There are still people getting on, being wondering how are they going to get this £100. So um, I'd be like Seamus there, thinking that a phone call would be better for some of the, the people that would contact me, would be big into emailing, or has even bad broadband, so they can't email. But I think that the Minister did release a statement yesterday 
saying that trying to answer some of them questions I just heard there, so I'm not sure what's on it now. So it'd be more on that than the information we're gonna to get tomorrow night. But I still think we should still write again and as well second chairman's is proposing. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Feely. So we have that proposed and seconded. Um, it is going to come up tomorrow night, but um, if members are agreed that um, a letter can be sent um, regardless. Yep. Okay, so we'll take that as uh, passed then. Thank you, members. Okay, and so we're on page seven. Now on to page eight. And the uh, Chief Executive is in again. Thanks, Chair. Just a uh, page eight. Um, sorry, it's really item number four nine, and it's the motion regarding the public inquiry into Northern Ireland's handling of care home residents. We've received a response from the Minister for Infrastructure's office to advise that if the matter is brought to the executive, she will certainly consider any paper that's brought forward. Okay, thank you, Alison. Again, members, for noting. So, I have uh, Councillor Dehan indicating through Webex. Thank you, Chair. Well, again, I find this response very disappointing. Uh, when we wrote, uh, we wrote to all the executive ministers and we weren't merely highlighting the motion that was passed by this council. We were specifically requesting that the individual ministers support this motion. It's an important motion, Chair, one that concerns the welfare of our elderly population and one that this council rightly uh, um, made a strong uh, statement on. And it's not just our opinion. It was the Commissioner for Older uh, uh, People, Eddie Lynch, who looked at all the information and decided a public inquiry was needed. So, Chair, I, I think this is very dismissive. I mean, I would like to hope that any paper that would come before any executive minister would have due consideration we're not asking for due consideration. We are asking for support. So a hugely disappointing response, Chair. Hugely disappointing. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Dehan, I nearly don't want to ask this, but would you be happy to note the I, I note, Chair, yeah. Disappointing as it is. Yeah, um, Councillor O'Coffey, in next. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I like uh, Councillor Dehan there. This is a serious issue and this is uh, a very offhanded uh, response, as minimalist as it can come. I guess uh, the only good thing about it is that at least this one minister did respond. Um, but uh, it's kind of shocking. 1,200 uh, people died in care homes in the crisis uh, associated with uh, COVID in Northern Ireland. 1,200 people, that's a huge number of people uh, to die and um nobody is doing an investigation on that in in northern ireland We're, we've been done as part of a uk-wide investigation uh initiated by boris johnson and i think we can all draw our conclusions um from that statement alone of how, what sort of thing is going to be exposed by it uh and we need something to find out the truth i know uh there's campaigners uh certainly i was talking to someone there in dungannon yesterday who was looking for the police to do an investigation into what has happened. Um, the issue is uh, in Scotland, the police are actually leading an investigation into the deaths of people in care homes. Uh, in Northern Ireland, we haven't got a public investigation. We've had an absolute disastrous internal cover-up uh, conducted by the Department for Health on this issue. And then uh, there's no public investigation, no police investigation, and uh, no truth no learning, no uh, assurances that this won't happen again. Uh, all of that is a chronic failure. And then you see one minister uh, actually bothers to respond to us so far. And even that one minister's response is barely contemptible, frankly. So uh, I'd second it for noting, but it's it's shameful. It's, it's genuinely shameful. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor, for those comments. Okay, members, so on then to page nine, matters arising. Page 10, Chief Executive. Thank you, Chair. Just um, item 8.3 references made to the Northern Ireland Audit Office's report on planning in Northern Ireland. Uh, members may be aware that Councillor Irvine was asked to accompany NILGA to make representations at the public uh, um, 
sorry, the PAC hearing last Thursday, and uh, it's just to seek approval retrospectively, Chair, for that to be an approved duty of the Council. Public Accounts Committee. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chief Executive. So, um, open it up to the floor just again, proposer and second are required. So, uh, Councillor Diana Armstrong. Yes, Chair, happy to propose. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Howard Thornton is indicated here. So, second that, uh, Chair. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Thank you, members. So, on to page 10. Page 11, page 12, page 13, page 14. And we have Councillor Donal Coffey indicating. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I'm just going back to page nine, if you will. Um, I tried to raise this uh, uh, in matters uh, uh, in, in accuracy. Um, there was two things I wanted to raise at that point. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you now, yes, Councillor. Uh, the first was um, in relation to... Hold on, hold on a moment. Am I, am I losing the plot altogether or what? Actually, I'm on page 50. Uh, oh, I'm lost. Uh, it was in relation... No, my apologies. Let me go. Uh, it's fine. I'll come back to you later on. Okay. Oh, okay, no problem, Councillor. So we have uh, page 14 and 15 and page 16, okay, item, or page 15. Yes, executive. sorry, Chair, just two items of correspondence to highlight to members. Item 15.3, a uh, response from the Department for Infrastructure regarding the coordination of work undertaken by utility companies. Uh, re really, Chair, this is setting out the structures that are in place but it doesn't actually deal with the issues that arose uh, in the council area whereby two companies came in in short succession and caused local uh, disruption for businesses and residents. So um, that's correspondence number one, Chair, and then I have a separate item for 15.4, but you may wish to take comments on that one, first of all. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Chief Executive. So open up to the members now, just on the first piece of correspondence. I see Councillor Thomas O'Reilly. Thank you, Chair. I suppose uh, this just follows uh, in the succession tonight of uh, totally uh, skipped and misrepresented uh, answers to uh, questions that we that we have posed. Chair, we didn't need uh, three quarters of the response to outline the uh, sort of. Um, regulations and who is uh, uh, responsible uh, in the areas. The gist of what I was trying to get across, uh, Chair, when I raised it was that we had fibers coming in, putting in uh, the fiber optic cable uh, during the late summer, um, early autumn. And then a few months later, we have BT coming in, digging up the exact same uh, ground uh, the one issue is the disruption. That's that's one issue. Uh, but in my view, the more important issue is that we have two companies spending absolutely hundreds of thousands, if not more, when you put that right across uh, the six counties, uh, to do the same work instead of using a combined duct to provide uh, to everybody so one place or one company should dig up, put in the duct, and then others use it, or some way of being able to coordinate this rather than have everybody deciding to dig up and put in their own uh, their own uh, cable. And once again, Chair, I don't know what we do as a, as local government because we're not getting answers to any of our questions. And as other councillors have stated here tonight, it is really uh, becoming, and this is as bad as I've seen it in 20 some years, uh, to actually write to anybody now as a local authority to get even an answer that reference your question. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I have Councillor Barry McElduff indicating next. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, we have an upcoming meeting, an informal meeting, I think it is called, with OpenReach, and they requested the meeting on strategic issues, but we have asked that we also address their knowledge of this problem, you know, as one utility company. And uh, I have reason to believe that they might bring, they might be in a position to bring some information uh, to light about uh, a bad situation in Sparren Park, uh, just off the Tamlet Road in Oma, where uh, the footpath has never been reinstated satisfactorily. In the course of my uh, interest in this subject, I also discovered that another, uh, a different utility company doesn't bother to notify DFA roads in advance. Uh, they have an IT system that manages the uh, scheduling of these things called Symology. And it's my understanding that one of the utility companies doesn't bother to notify DFA roads. And again, I've been asking DFA roads to enforce take enforcement action against these companies. They talk about their powers being limited variously. It's almost a legal discussion. But in the last week, there have been flooding problems in Craigan Park in the Strathroy area, area of Oma. And these are largely attributable, once again, to two utility companies carrying out work at separate times and making the situation uh, on a footpath impassable you know, for water. This has been brought to the attention of DFA Roads again. So again, we need to put on our thinking cap about uh, holding DFA to account and holding utility companies to account uh, in these matters. Thank you. But I, I know at the open reach meeting, I'll be raising the issue of Sparren Park. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councillor McAlduff. And uh, as you said, there is an upcoming meeting on this. So I think just in the interest of uh, brevity, um, I'm happy to um, just to move on. So I know there were councillors with their hands up, but um, there will be an opportunity in the near future to um, raise these very issues. So moving on then to item number six, which is matters arising from the special council meeting, which was held on the 14th of December. Oh. Oh, so sorry, I have councillor Emmett McAleer is indicating. Or hands are down. Chair, I just had the final item then, uh, 15.4 on geo-blocking. Just to advise, we received an email from Sky uh, earlier this evening and have uploaded that to the other correspondence folder. But in summary, they're advising that uh, Sky has no control over the matter and it relates specifically to RTE as it has been requested by the broadcaster. So we have issued previous correspondence to RTE on this matter and no response has yet been received. Yes, uh, apologies, members, for that um, correspondence was in the other folder. Um, so I have Councillor uh, Barry McIlduff indicating. Uh, this is work in progress because we'll be able to analyse at the end of this process when we get responses from at least four of the parties concerned, we'll be able to analyse where the problem lies specifically and particularly. It's good to get that correspondence from Sky. We await further correspondence from RTE and sporting bodies, and uh, uh, I would just propose then to note that correspondence for now on the sheer certainty that we'll be revisiting it soon. Thank you. Yep, Gorham Ogut, yep, serious issue. So I can just get a second there as well. Uh, call your Tomás McGear. That's proposed and seconded. So now, members, moving on to item six, then matters arising from the special council meeting. Um, which has been dealt with. Yeah. So, just starting off on page one, yeah, I have, um, so page one, page two, page three, page four, page three, Councillor Emmett McAleer. Thank you, Chair. No, it was actually just in relation to um, page two there, and uh, I appreciate tonight we were afforded the opportunity to speak on some of the residents of the district that had passed away, and just I had raised this with the chair that I mentioned um, 
John Crawford. I'm a member of the Dunbreen Football Club myself, and and I was uh, very appreciative that uh, he was mentioned and condolence was offered from the chair and from the council at the time. So just again to extend my sympathy to the families and again to Bob Lingwood, who would have been on the disability advisory group with myself. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And uh, Councillor Bert Wilson is also indicating. Yes, Chair. Just to declare an interest, as John Crawford would have been a family member. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Yeah, you heard you okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Okay, members, so just on page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page ten. Okay, uh, Councillor O'Coffey indicating. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and uh, just to uh this is why I was confused. I was looking at the wrong minutes. This is the one I wanted to page nine issues those on. And I, I just want to reiterate that I did not uh, second this. So it hasn't been seconded, just for your notion. Um, the the issues of uh, accuracy I wanted to raise were in relation to page nine. First of all... Uh, well, well, uh, well, apologies, Councillor. It, ha it has been adopted, I think, in your earlier well, mistake. You didn't it has been adopted seconded. because I haven't seconded it. I had my hand up for a point of uh, two points of accuracy around page nine, which I want to raise now. Yeah, well, it has been adopted now by the by the council. But who who Sorry, seconded it? Was council, who proposed it? Was council, it uh, my mistake. It was Councillor Maguire had seconded. So you're, you're he proposed uh, it according to you, I think. Councillor, we have it here from the chief executive, Councillor Irvine, uh, okay. and Councillor Maguire. Well, so uh, there's the, there's a there's a reference at the bottom. Well, I'll bring it in as a point uh, a question. Then uh, <clears throat> it states on a point of order, a member stated that significant discussion on the estimates had been undertaken and so on. Can I ask what point of order that was? Uh, what, what was the point of order there? I'll uh, go to the chief executive. Chair, it would be up to the the member who raised it, but that was the specific reference on the night. The member said on a point of order. That there have yeah. been significant opportunities uh, afforded during both the working groups and the the meeting in question. Uh, Chair, you uh, you'd be aware that uh, you can't just raise a point of order without stating what point of order you're raising. Chair, I think we're maybe running the risk of re-chairing a meeting. Uh, the chair ruled the acceptance of the point of order, and the meeting proceeded accordingly. Uh, I don't think it was enunciated as properly under the standing orders. Uh, the second point I'd like to r raise around is the uh, the issue of um, Recorded votes. Uh, previously, when we were in the chamber, if there was a recorded vote, it was apparent at that stage uh, to the public who may have been present and maybe to uh, the press on that night who had voted which way. As a result of the manner in which we're taking the recorded votes now, uh, that information is not provided until five days before uh, the the next council meeting and obviously there is an implication there for the ready transmission of uh, in, uh, important information around the democratic process to the public uh, and I would like to propose that uh, we adopt a, a simple system for example whereby uh, well, uh, well, it's um, been taken that it can just be provided Councilor, I just like to, if I could just speak for a moment, please. Thank you, uh, I believe that your proposal um, isn't isn't actually possible so we can't it's not um, possible accept. No, so we can't, unfortunately, we can't accept that. And just to let you know, your uh, time, speaking time, has been allocated. So um, apologies on, on that, but we can't accept that proposal. It's not possible. It's not possible, is it? No. Okay. Yeah, so just I'll bring Chief Executive in just to clarify the process on the recorded vote. Yeah. Chair, I think there's maybe some element of confusion uh, around this. I think reference has been made in previous meetings to roll calls. Um, and that was obviously before we we had the provision for the um, for the voting system. The recorded votes, it's, it's actually very clearly specified in standing orders, whereby the detail appears in the minutes. So everything that we have been doing is in, entirely consistent with our standing orders and uh, any proposal to deviate from that would not be appropriate. Okay, thank you, uh, Alison. I have uh, Councillor Keenan indicating now. So just on a matter arising, councillor? Yeah, well, firstly, I was going to second Dolan that proposal. 
secondly, just on a point of accuracy, um, you uh, well, didn't we, we, we've had a, the, we, second, a seconding the the special council minutes. Um, so oh, no, well, we, we've had uh, sorry, 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 we've had we've had I think the accuracy in, on in this. your haste to get them uh, wrapped up, similar to the meeting on the night, which was very hastily closed. Uh, Councillor, unfortunately, that that's been dealt with. So not Councillor, you're running it. You're closed and seconded correctly. Yeah. They have, well, they have, they have been, I can assure you, I can assure you, they have yes. been, so. Okay, well, well, we can look back at the recording, but I think you're, you're definitely wrong. You have been very hasty, similar to the night. The meeting was closed down without yeah. councillors well, being trying, allowed to speak. Trying to get the minute, trying to get There's the There's a lot of mistakes being made time, here. So, not, yeah, thank you, councillor, for the comments. So, thank uh, you. Uh, yeah. And finally now, councillor McAleer. Yeah, Chair, uh, just getting myself unmuted. It's unfortunate you feel the need to mute councillors in advance of this evening's meeting. I know that's at the discretion of quite, the Chair. Quite the board. same as the councillors in the chamber here in Town Hall and in Scaling. Like yes, Chair, but they can that. still they can still make themselves known to you. If you can indicate at any point you're free to indicate at any point. Such as Councillor O'Coffey had to raise at the start of this meeting but was ignored. But in relation to what's being discussed here, I'm quite concerned that the two names which were mentioned as proposing and second the accuracy of the meetings are now different. Um, whether that's on the advice of the top table, I'm not sure whether uh, what's been reported earlier in the meeting. Sorry, Councillor, just just I'm to clarify, sure. just to clarify that point very quickly that um, that's not true. That uh, we had the names recorded here from Chair. Uh, they're not the names. Why are and Councillor Yeah, the the, the minute the minute is accurate. Minute. Coffee were the two names that were called out. Well, that was, but that Henry, was a mistake on my part, possibly, but the minute is accurate as recorded here in um, top table. Jeez. Well, I, I just in relation to the queries that have been raised again tonight, I, I don't understand, and I, I know people that I've been speaking to fail to understand why there has been a change in policy that the recorded vote isn't made known on the night, indeed isn't made uh, known. But we, we've, we've had that clarified by the Chief Executive. Uh, Councillor, I just believe Chair, that you're... Chair, you're with respect, point we haven't had it clarified. We've been told that this is what the night, what the policy is now, but where previously we were informed on the night, that's not now the case. The second point that I want to make just very quickly is at a previous meeting we'd requested uh, information be brought back on who actually ordered or where the instruction to mute councillors going into meetings came from. That hasn't been provided yet and that's a matter of massive concern again given the course of tonight's meeting and the quite shambolic way that it's been held, with, held to date uh, or so far in this meeting. It's very concerning because people are being cut off, people aren't being allowed to speak. I notice again the chair feigns the need to speak over a number of councillors where he's not doing that against other. And the very final point Councillor Coffey raised, we were instructed quite early on in the mandate, if you're raising a point of order, you specify what standing order it is you're raising. Uh, that wasn't done on the night, but seemingly it's okay for some people to do that and come in because they're more concerned about getting away. Maybe people have to get away this evening because it's Pancake Tuesday. They right. Okay, Councillor, uh, your speaking, maybe speaking time is up. I think, Councillor, to be honest, Councillor, Councillor, can you please stop for a moment when the chair is speaking? I think that's, uh, to be honest, I think you're being a wee bit ridiculous, if I can say that. Uh, you've, you're re revisiting some points which have been already dealt with. Um, other councillors are able to keep up with the meeting, but uh, you feel to be a bit, be bit behind on that. So moving on now to um, Councillor Stephen McCann. Okay, thank you, Chris. Yeah, just a bit slow coming in there with the with the mute option. Although I am aware why we have to have this mute option. Unfortunately, it's to try and maintain some sort of control over meetings with councillors jumping in and being disruptive. So I appreciate while it's not ideal, it's a necessary function. Chris, we have had this uh, explained by Alice in, in detail. So I propose that we, that we move on now. There's some councillors going around here in circles and uh, holding up the meeting, being disruptive as usual. I propose that we move on here. Okay, proposed by Councillor McCann. Um, we have a seconder. Okay, Councillor Irvine in the chamber. Proposed and seconded, we move on. Thank you, members. So, so on to the next item now is um, item um, number seven minutes of the planning committee, which was held on the 26th of January. Again, just to go through for accuracy. I just ask on WebEx that uh, all hands are put down, please. Okay, so
go to Councillor uh, Glenn Campbell as chair of that committee. So, sorry, page one, page two, page three, page four, and page five. And I just go to uh, chair of the planning committee, Councillor Glenn Campbell. Happy to propose, Gaherty. Yeah, Gorham Ogget. Thank you. And we have um, Councillor, Councillor John McClory. You wish to second? Sorry, Chair. Um, I don't know what happened there. I, I, my hand went up. Um, I can only apologise, but if you want me to second, I will. But I don't know what happened. I must have been touched some part of my screen. Oh, no problem. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Okay, so proposed and uh, seconded then on to uh, item eight minutes of the special policy and resources committee which was uh, held on 31st of january so again members just to go through for accuracy um, page one page two page three yep. okay and that is to councillor howard tornton for proposal please I uh, propose acceptance of the minutes, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. And again, just uh, a second if required. Yeah, no, Councillor Paul Blake here in the Chamber. Okay, members, so then to item nine. Um, it minutes of the Environmental Services Committee, which was held on the 2nd of February. So again, going through just for accuracy, page one. Page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page ten, page eleven. Page 12, page 13. And just go to chair of that committee um, and to uh, Councillor Mark Buchanan for acceptance and proposal, please. Thank you, Chair. Happy to propose the, the adoption. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. And then just a second there in the chamber, we have Councillor Keith Elliott. Um, Members, and then on to item 10, Minutes of the Regeneration and Community Committee, which was held on the 8th of February. So, for accuracy, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page 10, Page 11, page 12, page 13, page 14, page 15, page 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay. And let's begin to go to the committee chair for uh, acceptance and proposal. Councillor Victor Warrington. Okay, so Councillor Warrington's proposed. And again, members, just a second, they're required. So Councillor Tommy McGuire, Gordier McGear, Gordon Muggett. And members, on to item 11, which is minutes of the PNR Committee Policy and Resources, which was held on the 9th of February. So again, for accuracy, page one, page two, page three, Page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, page ten, page eleven, page twelve, page thirteen, page fourteen, page fifteen, and page sixteen.
Back to Councillor Victor Warrington, please. Apologies back to Councillor Howard Thornton for acceptance and proposal. Uh, I propose, uh, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And again, members, just a second are required. Yeah, Councillor Robert Irvine. Thank you. Right. Okay, members, so that brings us then to item 12, which is minutes of the planning committee meeting, which was held on the 16th of February. So, again, just for accuracy, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, page nine, Page 10, page 11, page 12, and page uh, 13. Okay. And to go to um, Councillor Glenn Campbell for acceptance and proposal. Happy to propose, Charlie. Gormagut, Oyler. Okay, members, thank you for. Yeah, sorry, just a second required. So, Councillor Anthony Feely. Okay. Now, thank you, members, for um, bearing up with that. So, now just on to item uh, 13 on the night's agenda, which is items of correspondence. Uh, so, uh, item 13.1 uh, Department for Communities to consider following items of correspondence from the department. Thank you, Chair. Chair, just bringing these items of correspondence to members' attention, and it obviously relates to the potential listing of the Arda One uh, Theatre in Enniskillen. We'd just be recommending this evening, Chair, that members would note the correspondence, and we would be intending to bring a report to the Regeneration and Community Committee regarding the implications for the, the refurbishment uh, of the theatre. We have made provision in our tender documentation for the design team uh, that listing is a, is a possibility, and that would therefore be something that would be considered in the context of the design work. So uh, I'd suggest that approach if members were content, Chair. Thank you, Chief Executive. And I see Councillor Howard Thornton is indicating through WebEx. Hey, thanks, Chair. Yes, I mean, I'm quite happy to propose the noting. And I'm glad that Alison has stated there that we will be getting the paper back because obviously this has major consequences on the redevelopment uh, of, of our dome. And especially with regard to time delays and costs and so on and so forth. So I'm very pleased. Uh, that she's bringing back that paper as soon as possible. So uh, a proposed noting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And now I see Councillor O'Coffey next. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I'm happy to second the noting and the proposal. Uh, the, the information supplied is uh, genuinely quite interesting and uh, references the Bauhaus tradition and so on. Um, it actually makes you think how much about the building you, uh, you've missed. Uh, and I'm just wondering if there's a possibility even uh, of us having a, a bit of a, a look around to see the significance of these features. Um, I certainly didn't realize it has such a history. And uh, I think it's something we should make more of, actually. Um, but clearly, considering I think we're looking at, was it seven million pounds for a, a renovation? Um, this is uh, concerning from that perspective. So I'm looking forward to information on that. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Just to uh, bring Chief Executive in, please. No, no, just to say, Chair, certainly we can uh, facilitate a visit. We can maybe detail that within the report, some arrangements that would work and happy to accommodate members accordingly. Yep. Thank you, Alison. And um, members, just a second are required. I'm not sure if Councillor O'Coffey, he did, he did. Okay, so thank you, Councillor. Hey members, uh, on to the next item, 13.2. Thank you, Chair. Chair, um, this is correspondence from the Department for the Economy. Now, this is the consul, sorry, the consultee response uh, that was issued to everyone who submitted a consultation response to the original license applications. Now, members will recall our discussion at last month's meeting that there was notification via a PR company on the 1st of February, but it was the 16th of February before we were officially notified by the oh, sorry of the outcome. 
and uh, this letter from the department uh, refers to their website and the report detailing the various considerations of the responses received. Thank you, Alison. Um, so again, members just need a proposer and seconder for noting. Yeah, so Councillor Emmett McAleer is indicating. Councillor McAleer, if you wish to come in now. Yes, Chair. Um, I, I, like, I will propose to note, uh, just to raise a comment on it, if I may. Um, the, they don't really seem to answer the reason why the the applicant was informed or their PR company was informed prior to the local planning authority. And again, the the fact that the matter of permitted development rights uh, attaining to these prospecting licence remains very problem problematic and extensive, and it's much more intrusive in, in the environment than acknowledged either by the department or by the Geological Survey in Northern Ireland. Um, it also mentions the consultee responses, but the fact that most consultees in their previous consultation on the matter call for permitted development rights to be removed for gold mining. But again, this was ignored by the department, seemingly as our request to find out why uh, others were informed or advised of the department's decision before us. Um, so not impressed again with another letter coming down the road to us, but I will uh, note the recording or the rece reception of the letter. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor McAleer, and Chief Executive has a comment to make here. It, it's just to clarify, Chair, um, I, this letter was the standard letter that issued to everyone. We do have separate correspondence into the Minister specifically requesting why we were not notified and why we had to uh, await the PR company's um, uh, communication on the subject. So that response is outstanding, and I would expect that we would hopefully have that for next month's meeting. So this issued, I think, to everyone who had made any consultation response to the exercise, as opposed to in response to our letters to the department. Thank you, uh, Alison. So proposed by Councillor McIneer to note, just to require a seconder, uh, Councillor Tommy McGuire. Very uh, Next item, 13.3, uh, to consider a correspondence dated 16th of February from the PSNI regarding potential costs around explosive escorts. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, this letter is from Chief Superintendent Donaldson and addresses uh, some of the queries that the Council had, uh, had uh, I suppose, sought clarification on and also advises that some of the information uh, cannot be disclosed. Um, the letter then goes on to, I suppose, to set out the approach around the methodology and the general duties uh, in relation to this matter and concludes by offering the potential for a discussion on the subject here. So I'm not sure, given that we have made some representations on this, if the Council would wish to uh, request a meeting. We, we are aware that there is a, re a review underway and whether it would be perhaps timely for the Council to seek a briefing as to what the findings of that review have actually shown. I think it was due to be complete uh, at the end of March and that may be a, a way forward. Thank you, Alison. And Councillor McAleer indicating. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, thanks to the Chief Executive. I understand there are still out some outstanding queries, uh, which I appreciate. Uh, I will propose to note again the, the response, but it's worth noting that once again, the, the Chief Super Chief Superintendent Donaldson actually avoids the question of how the decision to change policy and grant the demands of Dalradian that the public must pay for all their policing and security costs. Uh, he avoids that question completely. That's what we were querying, I suppose. Um, the huge cost implications to the, the PSNA budget and operations appear not to have been considered whatsoever. And the figures presented don't stack up, they don't add up. Um, they're seriously misleading and the projected costs are unreasonably minimised. Um, I would like actually um, be mindful just of what the Chief Executive said, that we go back to the Minister in relation to this too and query uh, like once again how this decision was made or where this policy change has come from because it's not something for uh, for the policing themselves to take without uh, doing the, that those background checks, without doing a cost analysis and without the appropriate approval. Um, so I would like to make that as a proposal, Chair. Yeah, proposed by Councillor McAleer. Oh. Okay, so um, just I'll go on to Councillor um, Coffee next. 
Yeah, th- Graham, I got chair. Um, just in terms of, I'm happy to second that proposal. I think it's uh, on the ball. Um, it, like the, the 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 justification here is. Apologies, that Councillor, just just to say sorry, not sorry to interrupt you, but just um, that that proposal by Councillor McAleer, um, unfortunately, uh, isn't possible. Uh, just uh, Chief Executive will clarify, but if you wish to make any other comments, you can uh, return to your comments now, and we'll bring Chief Executive in to clarify afterwards. Well, that's uh, it's always interesting to hear why uh, the proposals of um, uh, councillors are um, judged in, in, incapable or uh, whatever else. Um, I just want to come back to this issue that uh, the response here states it's not in the public interest to disclose projected costing for aerial support. Right. Uh, we all know aerial support is probably the greater part of the costs associated with any um, transportation. Uh, the cost of keeping a helicopter in the air is substantial. Uh, and and the idea that uh, it's not in the public interest the, to know or have any in, uh, indication of the likely costs of um, aerial, uh, the aerial costs of, associated with this, when the likes of some of these companies have actually stated uh, that the total value of the gold that they're seeking to ex- uh, extract out of the uh, hills of Tyrone uh, is six billion pound, six billion pound they're going to make, and the profits arising from that will be absolutely colossal if they get away, if they proceed with this. <clears throat> and yet it is told we're being told it's not in the public interest to know how much is going to be associated with uh, the costs of the, borne by the public uh, by the public purse, by uh, the taxpayer. At a time when we ha- we've been just earlier on hearing that there's no investment in, for example, hosp- uh, healthcare facilities in Irvingstown, so we can't have uh, multidisciplinary teams. And at the very same time as that, the public purse is going to be opened wide out to the costs to enable a multi-billion pound industry to make absolutely colossal uh, uh, profits. Uh, it, how can this be justified as not being in the public interest? It is obviously in the public interest to have full disclosure over what is uh, the public are paying for here to enable massive profits to be made by big corporations at the very time when our public services are collapsing because they're not being funded, because nurses are not being paid an increase and and various other things. So, frankly, this is a disgraceful response. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. And I'll just bring in the Chief Executive now at this juncture. Sorry, Chair, it's just that members may recall you actually already voted on exactly the same issue in policy and resources. Uh, Minutes have just been adopted um, um, earlier in the meeting and on the casting vote of the Chair, the vote was defeated. So in accordance with standing orders, a motion with the similar or proposal with similar intent uh, can't be reconsidered for another six months. There was no call in of the decision nor a submission of rescinding motion. So that's the reason why it can't be considered. Uh, thank you for that, Alison. So you've had the clarification there, members. And I just have Councillor uh, Eamon Keenan in next. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Uh, well, 2852, the cost of this of a police officer an hour um, to do private security for, for this uh, security for, firm or for this gold mining firm. Um, there's, there's workers, NHS, workers in £12 an hour, public money has been pumped into the police to provide security for a, you know, a corporation, a foreign corporation to exploit, extract and take money and they can't even give us the answers. I think it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace that they won't tell us the exact cost and using all sorts of uh, excuses, but yeah, no surprise. Um, okay. uh, £28.50, those, those two police officers that came to Oma last week to uh, watch a peaceful protest and the week before as well in Enniskillen and they were actually very uh, intimidating towards peaceful protesters so I think it's far too much money for them to be annoying the public not alone uh, providing a free service at public cost to a foreign mining company. Okay, thank you for that Councillor Keenan. And I have Councillor McClaughery indicating next. Thank you, Chair. Obviously, uh, Superintendent, Chief Superintendent Donaldson uh, sent back a, a slightly more exaggerated letter than, than the, the previous one, giving us a breakdown. Uh, 
it's obvious this is applies to all industries using explosives and they all have to be treated the same i believe that's the matter that they're reviewing at the moment and it would be interesting to hear how that review ends and perhaps we should p take up uh, chief superintendent or donaldson on his uh, offer to come and speak to us uh councillor keenan mentions the 28 pound 52 an hour that just doesn't cover the police officers that covers the vehicles and all the costs right in their deployment uh i don't know any police officers that were at constable level that were receiving that sort of pay scale so uh, you needn't think that that's going straight into the constable's off pocket because they don't definitely go get paid anything like that amount but uh that's for something else for another day uh all right, so I'm going to propose that we maybe we take uh, Chief Superintendent Donaldson up and let him explain exactly why, if if he wants to, or at least the role that they have in escorting explosives, so that uh, we can get a full understanding rather than these outlandish that they're they're private security firms and stuff like that. There, I don't believe it's like that. There, I think that they have to treat all businesses using explosives fairly and the same way. But that's my interpretation of it. But I'd be interested to hear what he does have to say on it. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor McClory. So you're making the proposal that we meet with the Chief Superintendent, and okay, that's been made. Uh, I see Councillor Warrington in the chamber here indicating. So we'll bring you in now, Councillor. Thank you, Chair. Well, I, I'll obviously straight away. I'll, I'll second uh, Councillor uh, Councillor McCloughy's proposal. Uh, I suppose just to hit on a couple of things um, on, on the security at the at the gold mine, uh, the, the expense that is costing. Well, I suppose you have to ask yourself why there's such a need for the security there, and I think we all know the answer to that is it, it is the threat. Uh, made against um, the gold mining company on, on on what they're on what they're working on there uh, from individuals uh, and it, like it's well documented in that area and certainly very well known. Um, Councillor O'Coffey mentioned the six billion uh, of gold that's potentially potentially in that area. Well, well, I might go out with my spade later on, but anyway, um, that gold is still in the in the ground, obviously. And because the the uh, the there has been no ruling on it yet, it might be staying there, and it might come out of it, and and then questions could be asked. Then, if the gold does suddenly appear out uh, about expenses and etc. After that, thank you. Okay, thank you, um, councillor, and you've seconded that proposal. So I'll just um, move that proposal now. Um, is that we do seek to have a meeting? Um, so are all members agreed? So no dissent has been recorded that we have that meeting. So I'll take that as passed. Okay, thank you members. So that's that. Uh, item dealt with. So moving on then to uh, item 13.4, which is the independent review of Invest NI to consider correspondence dated 23rd of February from the independent review regarding in independent review of um, stakeholder engagement of Invest NI. So um, bring in the Chief Executive now. Okay, thanks, Chair. Chair, this is from Sir Michael Lyons, and he's seeking the Council's views regarding engagement on his forthcoming review. Um, and while he's not making commitments that we will get any, uh, I suppose, designated consultation, I would have thought, given the Council's concerns, particularly about the East-West uh, split of investment from Invest Northern Ireland, that it may be something that members would wish to at least seek the opportunity for an elected member engagement with Sir Michael. Um, the timescale for this work, I think, is relatively tight, and you'll see that we have to provide views uh, by the 7th of March. So it's really just to get some members' comments in that regard, Chair. Okay. Um, yep. Thank you, Alison. Um, so, just the same number of members are indicating on this. So, I'll just bring in um, Councillor Diana Armstrong first. Chair, I think possibly other councillors were ahead of me. Um, not not so certain. Would you mind checking? Just yeah. Apologies. Yeah. Um, happy the screen. To speak. Yeah, happy to speak. Uh, well, yeah. Apologies. The, uh, the screen's just returned back here now in town hall. So. 
you're right, it's Councillor Stephen Donnelly is ahead of you, so you, you'll Thanks, um, be second place, unfortunately, Diana, this time. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. And uh, I mean, I do uh, welcome this letter and indeed the, the wider opportunity that the independent review presents. And I suppose if it were the most appropriate forum and it would be something that would be acceptable, I mean, I would uh, propose and be in favour of an informal meeting uh, with Sir Michael Lyons or members of his team for us to be able to have that engagement and that exchange of views. Uh, I note that at the bottom of the letter, he says that it would be potentially in reference to exploration of views around the part the local government can play or currently plays in economic development. But I think that the greater imperative, especially in the context of this re review, would be just in terms of us making clear our views on the performance of Invest in to date, because I think that it's pretty uncontroversial to anybody who takes an impartial uh, look at the performance, just in terms of site visits to particular constituencies, in terms of jobs actually created, particularly over the last 10 year period, that and a more appropriate name for this organization would be Invest South Belfast. And I'm not being disparaging uh, in terms of the fact that I think that the investment is needed right across Northern Ireland. And indeed, I know that within the city of Belfast itself, there have been concerns expressed, uh, particularly in terms of site visits and investment in places such as West Belfast. But I think that we do have to recognize that this is an organization that has very clear issues in terms of regional balance and regional equality. And as part of this independent review, there does need to be um, a clear look at the way in which their work is conducted to make sure that there is a much more equitable spread in terms of investment, in terms of opportunities, in terms of site visits. And certainly I think that it would be important for ourselves as a corporate body and indeed for any representatives of this council uh, meeting um, uh, them to be able to put that clearly on the record and make our views very strongly known just on behalf of our constituents. So just to put that on the record, Chair. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Donnelly. So you're proposing we have an informal meeting then with uh, Michael Lyons. So, okay, so yes, that, that has been proposed. Um, next, I have Councillor Diana Armstrong, followed then by Councillor O'Coffey and then Councillor McAleer. Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, the, the 10x economy, 10 times better focusing on innovation in areas where we have strengths. Um, so recently, um, a few, a few of the councillors, we, we were conducted on a tour of Southwest College and the Skilling campus. And it's, I think that's a key component in the uh, strengths that we are developing for the future. Indeed, when you look at the document, the 10X economy summary, quite a lot of the, um, the, um, the areas of strength that they're focusing on the new and emerging technologies we are servicing in our district through that college at Southwest College. Um, I also, like Councillor uh, Stephen, um, would would like to see um, equitable spread because I think Fermanagh really does need need to be given the same focus as other districts in in Northern Ireland. Uh, we have also the Mid South West deal, so I think that the councillors who sit on that board should be involved in the the consultation. But I, I do see the response um, is needed by the seventh of March. It doesn't give an awful lot of time to to convey the thoughts and i'd like to ask the chief executive um what her thoughts are and how we can best design the consultation program i'd be interested to hear that as well thank you chair okay, thank you councillor armstrong and we'll just uh, bring chief executive in now okay chair thank you uh, chair i think we will be able to collate quite quickly the maybe members concerns and issues with the performance and the regional imbalance and maybe some suggestions about how economic development and, and growth can perhaps be dealt with in a, in a different way for the future. In terms of the consultation piece of it, um, so and I think we could get that certainly in advance of the 7th of March, I, I think the key element is to um, certainly encourage Sir Michael that there is a desire from an elected member perspective to engage meaningfully with him in, in this work, which is obviously quite um, a significant piece of work, probably the most significant for Invest in many years. and. I think we can argue the case uh, quite effectively as to why Fermanagh and Oma would be an appropriate um, touchstone for him in the context of elected member engagement as well. So I'd be confident we can meet the deadline around some general thoughts and views and certainly we'll do whatever we can, Chair, to encourage him um, to engage. My suspicion, I know he makes reference to travelling over, is that it is to make most use of his time, I would imagine it's more likely to be a series of virtual rather than face-to-face -face engagements, but we, we will know that in due course. 
Okay, uh, thank you, um, Alison, for that. So next, I have Councillor Donald O'Coffey. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I uh, I think we've just heard that we may have a virtual engagement uh, on a review of the Invest NI, uh, and uh, I note from the the correspondence there. Uh, that the, the review is supposed to uh, actively see, seek widespread evidence and opinion on the performance of the agency. Uh, well, I'd like to make a proposal. I think uh, uh, it's only a sensible one, really. Uh, we had a meeting there with Invest NI, and I think it's quite clear that they are failing to deliver anything when it comes to jobs, investment, or a future for young people, or hope. Uh, I'd like to propose that uh, we respond to this uh, invitation by stating that this council has absolutely no confidence in Invest NI as an economic development agency. It has completely failed uh, to bring investment into this area. It has overseen uh, a collapse in productivity. It has uh, overseen uh, a disinvestment. Uh, there's no ambition and uh, it, uh, it performs no meaningful function. You look around us uh, uh, across uh, just into Leitrim, Cavan, Sligo, Donegal, all those areas, uh, very rural, very peripheral, but they all have massive investment, lots of job creation. Why is it so impossible when it comes uh, to Fermanagh uh, and, and Oma, Fermanagh and Tyrone generally? Um, so I'd like to propose we have no confidence. That's what we should say to them. This council has absolutely no confidence in this development agency. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, thank you for that, uh, Councillor. So we had a, a previous proposal um, from Councillor Stephen Donnelly and seconded by Councillor Diana Armstrong to seek an informal meeting with uh, Michael Lyons on uh, about this um, in, inequitable um, share investment. So um, we'll just take that first proposal then. Um, so if all members are agreed to have that informal meeting, to seek that informal meeting with Michael Lyons. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing no dissent. So I can take that as passed then. Oh, apologies. So, Councillor uh, Emma McAleer and Councillor Green, um, unless they're dissenting. Yeah, Chair, I have the opportunity on un unmuted here. I, this is Sean Bollock again. Yes, I'm dissenting. I've had my hand up for about 10 minutes since. Councillor Warrington made some quite slanderous accusations about the people that I represent. Well, well, well like Councillor, again, Councillor, again, again you, you're referring back to United Nations Councillor, hold on, you're referring back to United Nations Councillor. How do you pick and with? choose when you look at the hands that are up and what's going into the chat? And when I'm not picking and choosing. Work, I'm what's, deciding what's in a matter there? of order people that who have indicated to speak, Councillor. So Chair, I have last item was dealt with. That last item was dealt with. We've moved on to the next item. No, Chair, it hasn't been dealt with because you chose to move on without addressing all the speakers you had indicated. As chair, I as chair, I can make that decision. Chair, That's why I'm in the I chair. Would, so, I would like to appreciate. I appreciate that. I appreciate you may have grievances, councillor. I appreciate you may have grievances. Councillor, councillor, outrageous accusations. Councillor McAleer, about threats coming from people. I'm asking now, understanding orders towards Dalradian. Councillor, I'm asking now, understanding orders that you please stop interrupting the chair. If you look at the record, you'll see the people who are part of the police. They've been harassed constantly by the chair and their supporters. And yet, Victor Warren, please do not make me resort to tactics I would use in my classroom with primary school children. Come on now. The accusation on the people of Greencastle. Councillor McAleer. Councillor McAleer. This is ridiculous. Please stop. And I want to know when you're going to call him to order. You're so Answer. quick to call everybody else to order who isn't a representative. I am calling you to order because you're interrupting the chair. Nobody else speaks over the chair. When you to order. Councillor, point, point of order, please. That he makes. Under he standing orders, please respect the chair. To visit the people okay, Councillor, right. okay, can we just mute him, please, sir? Wait, chair, when are, you, when are you going to call him to order? Can you answer that basic question? Councillor, I moved on from that previous uh, item. I understand you have grievances of what he said, but that's um, a matter for yourself. I moved on. The matter was dealt with. Now, please stop going back to the previous items. We're trying to get this wrapped up tonight. Okay. So, Councillor Green, next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, it, uh, uh, I don't know what to say about uh, uh, some of the behaviour that's, that's going on. Uh, 
uh, there's some of the councillors, I think, acting a wee bit like uh, Don Quixote, who uh, used to act windmills thinking they were giants, uh, imaginary uh, conspiracy theories, all sorts of things that's going on here. It's just uh, every item there seems to be a problem with or there seems to be a conspiracy with. Uh, it's getting, uh, it's just getting out of hand. I, uh, you know, I have sympathy with some of the things that's uh, been said. Uh, you know, surely there can't be something wrong with everything, you know, so uh, I want to see that, you know, it's a bit like the uh, poor old Don that kept attacking the, the windmills, thinking they were giants, you know, maybe the, he, uh, like Don, the needs to look, look at themselves, maybe. But anyway, going to the point that I wanted to, to make, uh, and it was slightly, it was something Diane uh, uh, Armstrong, uh, Councillor Armstrong mentioned about the South West growth deal. Could I just ask uh, the chief executive when we are going to get a, a comprehensive update on that? Because I kind of have I would have a wee bit of concerns about that, that it's going to go like in Beth and I, and that Fermanagh will get very, very little out of it. But uh, I know you're on a, on a slightly different thing, but it's the same type of thing with uh, investment into the county. And uh, apologies if, if uh, this is already coming to the council for that, but uh, uh, maybe uh, the chief is for the clarifying that. Yeah, okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Green. I'll allow it, it's on a similar topic. So if the Chief Executive wishes to come in now to elaborate. Yes, Chair, my recollection is we brought a report in either Jan sorry, January or February uh, in terms of where we are in the context of the, the growth deal, but certainly we can bring a further report to the, the April meeting, the March agenda would be settled now, but certainly for the April meeting, we can bring a further report as to the stage we're at on the, the growth deal and the, I suppose, the milestones and also the, the remaining work as well. Yeah, thank you, Alison, for that. So next, I have Councillor Matthew Bell. Um, yes, Chair, if you allow me, can I, uh, can I just ask the Chief Executive to clarify what the purpose of the chat function is on WebEx? My understanding is it's only to raise point of order, point of orders, and I find it really disparaging that some councillors are sitting in this meeting obeying the process while others aren't. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Absolutely. I'll bring Chief Executive in now. Yes, uh, Chair, we have been using the uh, chat function on WebEx for technical queries in the first instance, and then for members who are on WebEx, if they wish to request, for example, a recorded vote or to advise of a point of order, they would be the only uh, purposes for, for the chat function on WebEx. Okay, thank you. And finally, now on this uh, item, I have Councillor Bernice Swift. And and my uh, action in there isn't swift because of that locking system. So I'm a bit bit frustrated about that. I'm swift by name and swift by nature. So we need to sort out that locking business. Anyway, on the growth and city deal, the fact that that uh, was supposed to be a bespoke package of funding and all of that between, uh, I suppose, central government authorities and us locally, uh, to help with harnessing all the additional investment that is so much needed. Other councillors have already made that point. And again, working harmoniously with a special needed broadband service, uh, we definitely need responses, Alison, and I thank you for that suggestion now that you're going to bring back uh, some more information on that. Because I suppose given that recent NIAO report on the whole uh, project stratum business we do have issues as well we cannot possibly attract investment or wonderful entrepreneurship if we do not have the digital infrastructure that's required uh, and then just very quickly here look uh, the last speaker uh, talks about the chat function there this chat function is probably going to have to be renamed to the ICT function alone because if it's not clear at this point to the last speaker it, you know the difficulties that some of us are having well then <laughs> there's a problem and uh, lastly but by no means least I would ask that Councillor Warrington would retract his comments made earlier because i do believe the description baseless was made and i agree with that i was rather shocked but i think the opportunity should be given for him to retract those remarks of the people of the green castle area gurmagat gurmagat uh, councillor swift um 
Well, there's been a lot of discussion um, on that previous issue, so I'm not going to go back into it now at that stage. As I said, if members have grievances with what has been said, um, you know, that's entirely uh, a matter for, for them. And they're welcome, of course, to speak with Councillor um, Warrington at any stage if they wish to do so. So, um, okay, members, so I'm taking that uh, item as dealt with. We will seek to have a meeting with uh, Michael Lyons and his team um, Okay, in the, in the near future. So on then to item 13.5, um, correspondence from DERA dated 24th of February from uh, regarding um, the Ally uh, Court tomb. And I'll bring in the Chief Executive now at this stage. Yes, Chair. Um, Chair, the, in the Minister's response, he makes reference to a meeting which was convened in June of last year, uh, at which there were various representatives. So we followed up with officers today and we also have received uh, representations as well, or some additional information from some of the West Rome councillors, which has been helpful. So, Chair, if uh, members were content, I'd recommend that we would note this letter and that we will, from an officer perspective, convene an interagency meeting, which would include reps from Forest Service, uh, HED, Drumquin Historical Society, the Department for Communities and the, the relevant council officers, with a, view, sorry, with a view to scoping out the detail of the proposal that we could bring that to you for the April Regeneration and Community Committee meeting. Um, a submission has come in previously from Drumquin and that has not yet worked around, I suppose, the various parts of the Council, but we would hope to get that concluded now in the next couple of weeks to enable a substantive report to April's meeting. Okay, thank you, Alison. And so members, again, just as been outlined by the Chief Executive, just for proposing um, to note and... Okay. Um, so just take a proposer, oh, I'm saying, uh, uh, Councillor Anne Marie Donnelly is indicating through WebEx. Thank you, Chair, and I'm happy to propose to note, and I'd like to thank Alison for giving that detail as to how we try to progress matters, and I'm very thankful for that because the Drunquin Historical Society are very keen to keep this project moving forward in an attempt to preserve and maintain the site. So thank you, Alison, and I look forward to the updated April's meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Uh, next, I have Councillor Mark Buchanan. Thank you, Chair, and I'd be happy to second that course of action as well, and thank Alison also. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. And now, Councillor John McClarty. Thank you, yeah. Happy to, to, with the noting of this. Uh, again, uh, this is yet again an, another reflection of the department's uh, passing the book and and passing everything on to the council. This is this is this land and uh, this is literally just down the road. It's a couple of miles away from me, although it's it's within uh, in Councillor Buchanan and Councillor uh, Anne Marie, Anne Marie's uh, area. But it's literally a few miles down the road from me, and I know this site very well. It's 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 not far off the road. It's not for the faint-hearted though. You do need good shoes to get up to it or boots. But uh, yet again, this is the department passing the buck. The, the councillor taking this on, and we're going to have to carry out the work with. But they're the ones that are doing all the forestry industries. You've also got the water reservoirs up there, so all those different uh, sites that are making the money for the departments and. Uh, it's again been dumped onto the council and the ratepayers to to take the burden for it. And whilst I welcome it, I've worked with the Drumquin Historical Group on a number of projects in the recent times. Uh, this is just another example of, of the, the, the Stormont departments dumping on, on the councils and us having to carry the load. Thank you, Councillor McClory, for the comments. OK, so... Um, Again, members just asked that there, um, if your hands are up, that it's on this item and not on a previous item, um, the item we're dealing with, hand. So, okay, so, yeah, so uh, Councillor Amory Donnelly, your hand is still raised, just wondering, that's from earlier. And Councillor Eamon Keenan, just... Um, if it's on this item only, 13.5, the item we're dealing with. 
just before you mute me, uh, Chairman, my hand was up on the last item and you moved on. Didn't yeah, yeah, yes, but, uh, but Councillor, I, another, I, I moved on, but Councillor, I moved on, so an item has been dealt look, with. The same thing happened at the rates meeting, my hand was up and I wasn't allowed to speak. If I put my hand up, I'm indicating to speak. Now, now you're going back. To be afforded the same respect as every other councillor here. Right, okay. uh, can... talk. And as well as that, a constituents oh, on the sorry, sorry. Can video I just ask one second? Sorry, clip. Clip. speaking open one second. Could you just... And given the V, one, thing, one, the v one, one second here. Somebody in the chamber to raise speaking about intimidation and escalating. Now, I will send you on the video okay, clip, so, Chris. Uh, Your behavior I, I, I'm is sorry, just to meet. Just to uh, mute that councillor. Okay, so jumping back to. Yeah, so. Uh, oh well, it'll be okay. So, um, Councillor uh, Amory Donnelly had her, had her hand up. Do you want to come back in? All right, thank you, Chair. It's just really in response to uh, Councillor McClory's comments. I understand the interagency meeting is really to scope out how we move forward. It's not necessarily for Council to take things on board. It's just to look at how we can address this you know, what we can do for this site, not necessarily the council, it's just bringing everyone together to have a proper discussion about it. So thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Donnelly. And now I have uh, in the chamber, I have Councillor Tommy McGuire, Corlier, or Shock Little Hull. I'm going to carefully thank the Chair, and uh, unfortunately I'm not coming in on item 13.5, but I'm coming in to, to uh, suggest to the Chair that there was a threat made there that uh, members in the chamber have heard and uh, I want to formally suggest that that be investigated. Uh, I also want to draw attention to all members that there is an orchestration by some members to get themselves muted tonight because on Twitter they all seem to want to be put into the naughty corner as they've caused it. So there's obviously a campaign by some councillors uh, Councillor McAleer, obviously speaking over the chair, uh, total disrespect against the, uh, the Stanton orders. Uh, Councillor Keenan, similarly, and indeed uh, Councillor Fowles, oh sorry, Councillor O'Coffey also seemed to want to get himself into the naughty corner of stages tonight. So I just want to put it on record that it's regarded as totally unsatisfactory. It's against Stanton orders. It's not what we're in here for. We're not properly representing our people by continually playing these games. Uh, possibly with ambitions for other political uh, uh, achievements and good luck. But, uh, Chair, it's totally unsatisfactory. It's not what the rest of us are here for. And I wanted to, that uh, threat to be investigated, Chair. Totally unacceptable behaviour. Gormogat, uh, uh, Corlier, thank you, Councillor McGuire, for, for that. And I just say to members at this stage that, uh, as Chair, I do find it frustrating when certain uh, councillors who know the standing orders, we all know what the standing orders are, we've signed up to them, uh, would seek to deliberately disrupt a council meeting um, and we do have lots of work to get through. We're not here just to play political games. We're here to do work on behalf of the people which we represent, which is in all parts of Mana and Oma District Council, um, not just in one or two parts. So I um, appreciate the comments and again, members, apologies for any disruption to tonight's meeting. Um, I've been trying to deal with it as best as I can. So. Um, with those comments made and noted, we'll move on now to item 13.6, which is the uh, Lockern Landscape Partnership to consider details of the partnership Keys to Sustainable Tourism online workshop, which is taking place on the 8th of March. Um, so again, I'll hand over to the Chief Executive now. Thank you, Chair. We're bringing this just really for members' attention, but it is a free event um, and is something I know that members have particular interest in. We would uh, happily take nominations so that we could make the registrations on members' behalf, and it's arranged as part of the Locker and Landscape Partnership work. Yep. Thank you. Okay, members, so you've heard from the Chief Executive. So just again, a uh, proposer uh, to note. Okay. Um, Councillor... Councillor Howard Thornton. Uh, thanks, Chair. I'm quite happy to note, but I'd also like to attend the event. Uh, so I'd like to put my own name forward for it, as the Chief Executive stated there. Thank you, Chair. Yep, OK, no problem, uh, Councillor. Thank you. And OK, so just um, a second there, maybe somebody just to um, prove that. So I see Councillor Anthony Feely here in the chamber. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Yeah, yeah, happy to second, and I'd, I'd like to attend to Alison and Luke. Oh, okay. Right from the line. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony Gormogut. Um, and now back to WebEx, I have Councillor Diana Armstrong. 
Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'd like to put my name forward to attend. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then in the chamber here, we have Councillor Robert Irvine. Um, well, I'll propose um, the attendance by those three councillors that have uh, put their names forward. Uh, Chair, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Irvine. Okay, members, so that's that item. Uh, that was apologies. We have Councillor Siobhan Vicari, uh, McGeary, Tars Jock. So. Malishkil Kerley, just to put my name forward as well, if that's okay. Okay. <laughs> <I know>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. Ultra row it. Okay, so, okay, members, so unless there's anything else, I think that's that item. Definitely. We're back to Councillor Irvine. Well, just for clarity, then I'll include uh, Councillor yeah. Curry in my um, <laughs> seconding as well. <laughs> well. Thanks very much. That's all our I's and J's dotted. Okay. So, Okay, members, that's the item dealt with. On to the next, 13.7, uh, Nureen and Dock Chambers to consider details of their annual cross-border conference, conference taking place on Zoom on the 9th of March. And again, I'll hand over to the Chief Executive. Chair, thank you. Um, and again, this is a, another free event via Zoom. And as members will have seen, there it's being uh, addressed by both the Minister for Finance, Conor Murphy, MLA, and also the Irish Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, Michael McGrath, TD. And it runs, uh, it's a, sorry, arranged by both chambers. And again, we would take uh, registrations here, Chair, and make those on members' behalf. Okay, thank you, Alison. Um, and at this stage, I would just like to maybe announce my own interest in that. I'd be interested in, in attending that one as well, if possible. Okay, and open up to the, the floor. So again, a proposer and seconder to note. And if any members wish to attend, you can um, let make it known your interest uh, now. Okay, so we'll just take a proposer and seconder, then we can. Oh, yeah, okay, so Councillor Howard Thornton. Uh, thanks, Chair. I just uh, proposed uh, to note, and obviously, for there was somebody there that wanted to go, so I'm quite happy to propose that as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And so just to seek a seconder then for that, we have Councillor Paul Blake. Okay, Gormago, thank you, members. So next, item 13.8, uh, to consider details of NILGA Conference, the Future of a Generation, to be held in Craig Avon Civic Centre on the 15th of March. And again, I'll pass over to the Chief Executive. Thank you, Chair. I think all members have already received the invitation directly from NILGA, but again, it's just to seek uh, confirmation of any members who wish to attend. It is an in-person event, and it will be held um, on the 15th of March in Craig Avon, as indicated. Okay, thank you, Alison. Um, so I see Councillor Stephen McCann has his uh, hand raised, Drew Webex. Hi, it's just to formally note that correspondence if you require to be noted, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. And then we had Councillor uh, Alec Baird. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to attend that. Okay, thank you. Just a second. Just a second there, then, if that's okay, members. Yeah, Councillor McGuire. Okay. Thank you, members. So um, next, then on to item 13.9, uh, other. Um, and I'll just pass over to the Chief Executive at this stage. Thank you, Chair. Chair, there were uh, four items in total in the other correspondence folder. We've dealt with three of them in the course of the meeting. So the final item is from Sustainable Northern Ireland. And as you, you'll have seen, uh, they are hoping to secure cross-party support for a well-being of future generations bill for Northern Ireland. There's an open letter has been at, uh, attached to the correspondence. And if the council was, they're obviously seeking our support for this. And if members were supportive chair, we could uh, issue this on behalf uh, of the council to the various parties within the, the Northern Ireland Assembly. Okay, thank you, um, Alison. So again, um, we've heard it from the chief executive. So. Um, Again, just to propose to uh, to note the correspondence. Yeah, Councillor Victor Warrington proposed and just a seconder. I see there are just at this stage, sorry, I'd see there are a number of hands raised on WebEx. I just asked that uh, all hands are lowered unless it's to do with the current item. You wish to speak on it? Councillors Bird, McCann, McAleer. Yeah. 
So, um, Councillor Diana Armstrong has her hand raised, so I'll just bring her in now. Thank you, Chair. And if you would permit, it's going back to the, the previous item, Nilga. That regeneration conference has been postponed. Um, there was an email issued yesterday uh, due to busy schedules in the upcoming election. That was from Amy McGrath, just oh. to, to inform members. The, it was scheduled for the 15th of March. It's not right. postponed. Thank okay, you, that, that, that's great. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong, for, for that uh, update. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, so just go to Councillor Siobhan Curry here in the chamber. Call your the Curry. Good, Carly. Uh, just, um, just sorry, we're on um, other, aren't we? 13.9 on the yes. correspondence there from Stainable NA. Um, was the proposal there just to note? Was just to note uh, the correspondence, unless if um, I was just wondering, Chair, if we could possibly invite them in just to hear more information about that. Um, it does sound interesting, so just if we could get some more information on it, Chair. Yeah. Okay, so just proposal to bring um, some of the members in. Okay, so yeah. does that require a seconder, Councillor? Yeah, so Councillor Warrington, if you're happy, just to include that in the proposal that we invite members. Yeah. Okay. So, and I'll second then. Uh, yeah. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so um, we have a point of order 19.6 from Councillor McAleer. 19.5. Finally, um, Chair, 19.5, precedence in speaking. Um, I have serious concerns about the way this meeting has been chaired and the way speakers have been permitted into it. It seems that people in WebEx are being patently ignored. Uh, Councillor Keenan had his hand up uh, to, to raise a, a second emotion. Councillor uh, Copley has been, and you seemingly pick and choose when you do look at it. I don't know, Chair, could you clarify, is there someone in the chamber keeping an eye or monitoring people who have their hands up or people who are commenting in the chat? Because it's, it's an absolute farce tonight. Okay, thank you, Councillor, for the comments. First. I can thank you. Okay, yeah, you've made your, you've made your comments. Yeah, thank you. There is, there are people in the chamber who uh, record hands being raised, and I've been given um, speaking rights to people who've indicated in order. Um, so I've been doing that continuously throughout the meeting. Um, unfortunately, you've had a habit tonight of going back to previous items which have been dealt with, um, and which has led me to take some actions against uh, yourself, which I don't enjoy doing to any councillor, and I'm not targeting any particular councillor, but if you keep referring back to previous items in the agenda, um, well then, unfortunately, that's uh, the decision that has to be taken. So um, your your point of order um, doesn't doesn't have any relevance, and I do have discretion as chair to bring people in to meetings uh, and also to mute them or put them out if, if needed. So thank you for that. Okay, members, so that is the uh, the items of correspondence that have uh, dealt with. Okay, we've heard it proposed and, and seconded there. Okay, so um, that brings us on now to item 14, any urgent or unrelevant business in Grow Ella. And we have received um, some items from councillors, which I will allow you tonight. Okay, so... Um, So we have Councillor uh, Bell first. So Councillor Bell, you can come in on your item now. Just wouldn't want to be accused of not giving councillors a chance to speak on things they want to raise. Uh, so, sorry, Chair. I just a second get myself unmuted there. Um, over the past number of days, we have we have seen on traditional and social media, we've watched as Russia has marched into um, the Ukraine bombing civilian and military targets. The international community has shown support for the Ukrainian people, with cities such as Paris's Eiffel Tower being lit up blue and yellow. Our own capital city of London has likewise lit the London Eye in support. And I understand our local capital, Belfast, will soon light um, its city hall again to show support for the Ukrainian people. Um, it's time for Forman and Oma to follow suit, and therefore I propose that at the soonest and most suitable and possible time, we light up Oma Street Art Centre and Enniskill and Castle Blue and Yellow to show that we too support the Ukrainian people in this time of crisis. Um, alongside this, um, if you allow me, Chair, I'll make a second proposal 
that we also release a statement of condemnation to the aggressive actions of Russia and especially its president, Vladimir Putin. The statement can be released, I'm sure, um, on our usual channels, such as social media. Um, I hope everyone in this chamber um, supports this proposal and joins the Ulster Unionist Party in our support of Ukraine during this crisis. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor. So two proposals there to um, make a statement of condemnation and for elimination um, of the council facilities. Okay, so members, we had it proposed. Um, do we have a, a seconder? I see Councillor Irvine in the chamber is indicating. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm happy to second both proposals from my colleague, Councillor Bell. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And next, I have Councillor um, Tommy Maguire, Collier of the Gear. Just, uh, first of all, if I could just for clarification, I understand that we have not got the facility for two colours of lighting up. So just for information on that. But on the, on the broader issue that uh, the, the councillor has raised, if I could just state that Sinn Féin has condemned the brutal attack on the uh, Ukrainian sovereignty and sent solidarity to the Ukrainian people. We also support the sanctions that will ensure a high price will be applied to the Russian regime and its supporters. Uh, we call for an end to the aggression and call for dialogue to restore peace and respect for international law. Gormagut Akerli. Okay, uh, Gormagut Akerli. Hey members, so um, we've we've had that proposal, the two proposals from um, Councillor Bell, Seth, and Councillor Irvine. Uh, just in the interest of brevity, as there still are the confidential reports to get through tonight, I'm just going to move that to uh, a vote. So, can I ask then um, oh, if all members are agreed? Okay, and we'll just uh, that seems to be the agreed. I'll just allow the chief executive in. Yeah, and, and Chair, it was really just as Councillor Maguire had indicated, we could only illuminate in one colour, so I think probably yellow may be the more appropriate if um, Councillor Bell and members were content with that. And we, we could proceed as uh, okay. as indicated. So... One yellow, one blue. Okay. okay. Sorry, Chair, I think there's maybe a view one building could be yellow, the other could be blue across the district. Okay, we can work on that basis. Thank okay. you. So I'll just check if Councillor Bell is uh, happy with that then. Yeah, so we just um we do have um some dissent has been recorded by Councillor Emmett McAleer and uh, Councillor Keenan. And now Councillor O'Coffey also. So those dissents are recorded. Yeah, and uh, Councillor Matthew Bell now just to clarify if you're happy with the um with the um illumination procedure. Apologies, Councillor Bell, we're just not hearing you, just to, just to clarify you're happy with, with it. Uh, sorry, Chair, the mute button only came up there now. Um, I was, I'm was i happy enough enough with um, one being blue, one being yellow, but um, whilst Tommy Maguire or Councillor Maguire was speaking, um, would, it, would it be perhaps more appropriate to light up both buildings in blue? as um, uh, the national colours of um, Ukraine is blue and yellow, and it is specified that it is blue and yellow in that order, with blue having priority. Yeah, no, that's, that's, um, that's fine. Yeah, we can, we can certainly do that. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, so thank you, um, Councillor Bell, for, um, for that. Um, so the next item of any other business I have is from uh, Councillor Warrington. Thank you, Chair, <clears throat> and I I'll be brief on this. Uh, I don't know how many of you, how many of you have been watching the serious uh, fast on the farmish, farmers on TV. Uh, I have to put my hands up and say I haven't. Um, but I plan to watch it back on on iPlayer. Um, I've been told that it's hilarious, that it's very, very funny, 
Uh, and for those who have been watching it, it, it basically entails uh, young farmers from the different areas uh, taking part in different uh, tractor runs and that type of thing. Uh, it's just to say that uh, the team from Northern Ireland is actually uh, the, the team who have got through to the, fa the semi-finals against Scotland, the Northern Ireland team, actually are all uh, Fermanagh-based uh, individuals, uh, namely uh, William Parkinson, Daniel Thornton and Wayne Manley. Uh, so it's just to basically highlight that the next, uh, if you haven't, uh, I've been told that you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. And the next segment will be their semi-final against Scotland. So I think it, it would be just, it would be fitting that if this uh, council could wish them all the best, uh, as they're all from the FODC area. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for that, Councillor Warrington. Um, I've seen some of the series and I have to admit it is quite uh, entertaining. Um, regularly talked about in some of the schools I'm working in as well. The children are uh, big fans of the show. So, yeah, um, so we've had that um, proposal then. Um, I see that there are, um, just take a seconder this, at this stage. Here we have Councillor Keith Elliott in the chamber. Thank you. So proposed by Councillor Warrington, seconded by Councillor Elliott. All agreed? Yeah, members, I'll take that as passed then. Hey, members, so just to um, go into uh, confidential to deal with the remainder of the meeting, can I have a proposer and seconder, please? I see Councillor McGuire in the chamber, Councillor Irvine, proposed and seconded to go into committee. So just bear with us now um, in one moment as we turn off the tape.
Okay, so the recording's back on, tape's back on. Um, we're now on our um, final item of business, so the confidential report, um, or sorry, the comments from the Chief Executive, so I'll just pass over to Alison now. Chair, thank you very much. And while in committee, the Council confirmed and signed the confidential minutes of the Council meeting held on the 1st of February. There were no matters arising, and also confirmed the confidential minutes of the following committees. The Planning Committee held on the 26th of January, the Special Policy and Resources Committee held on the 31st of January, the Environmental Services Committee held on the 2nd of February, the Regeneration and Community Committee held on the 8th of February, and the Policy and Resources Committee held on the 9th of February. Thank okay. you, Chair. Thank you, Alison. And uh, so members with the business dealt with, um, just need a proposer and seconder for that, so we can get a proposer. Proposed Councillor Warrington, seconded Councillor Blake. Okay, thank you, members. Um, so just before I let you go, I would like just to, um, this opportunity to um, say that uh, Shockton Nagelica has been commenced um, over the weekend at the Conroe Nagelica annual meeting. Um, I myself as vice chair have been able to launch the event locally in Fermanagh and Oma, and there are lots of uh, events taking place. Um, I'd like to encourage all members and um, council members and staff and uh, anyone watching online or any of the public to um, take part in these activities and to um, show interest in the Irish language. It's a language for everyone. The Festival of Shocked in the Gaelica, which is Irish Language Week, uh, in typical uh, Irish and this part of the world fashion, it goes on for two and a half weeks. Um, we know how to have a good time. So um, there are events taking place all around. Um, again, it's for all members of the community. It's for every single person. Um, new speakers, fluent speakers, people who have an interest in the language or in town lands. Um, so I'd encourage everyone to take part. When tre lass and mage gaelic ta agaf, use whatever Irish you have. August when saltas and enjoy it. And with that, members, just to conclude tonight's meeting. But while I'm here, why are I live? Good night to everyone, and thank you for um, the cooperation tonight and getting through the agenda. Um, Slana Wally is safe home with anyone who's travelling, uh, and Shinea Shinea will. That's all. Thank you. Go on,